slobberin' time. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. Come get some. It's clobbering time! The word is given. Clobberanimo! Yeah, Clobberanimo! Clobberable, ever love, hello, 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 my friends, welcome. Greetings, uh, and uh, good to see you all out there, folks. Clobbers, Clobberanimos, Clobberettes, Clobberuskis, Clobberoids, Clobberians, Clobologists, those who clobber. But those who do not yet clobber one day, perhaps you will if you learn how to bang the rocks together, guys. Clobber on them all! We indeed. Ah, my good friends, welcome to Clobber and Times. ECU number 470 on uh, YouTube, that is, of course. Uh, 1,470 overall for the past 15 years now, right at the 15-year mark, just about, or almost. Uh, tonight, of course, it is Clobby's Clubhouse, number 127, with the most wonderful first officer in the fleet, Commander R.M. Briggs, and the great chief engineer, Mark D. When I see. And hello, hello. And all of you wonderful people, absolutely ishness. And so, good to see you all. We'll do some shout-outs and some shout-outs after we get some opening words from our wonderful first officer. So I, I heed the helm to you, Commander R.M. Briggs. Thanks for being here. Love you. Great to see you. I love you. It's so good to be here, boss. Reporting for duty. Duty! <laughs> she said Mark, duty. I said <laughs> duty. And Penny. <laughs> uh, hail to the chat. Good evening, one and all. It is so good to see you. Welcome to Clubby's Clubhouse on Clobberin' Times. Uh, we are going to be talking about Blake Seven, Kolchak, uh, the, a, a brand new uh, Star Trek uh, comic book series that Clobby has uh, chosen for us because, you know, he is a subject matter expert, uh, despite what some nincompoops uh, said to him today. If they only knew, they would probably melt from shame. Um, I have to say hello to some people and to thank them. And this takes a few minutes, and I'm sorry if it's boring and you're annoyed by it, but you know what? I, I don't think I do this by myself. I do this with the love and the help of many people, and they matter to me. Um, they are deep in my heart. These are loyal friends and, and marvelous human beings, and I want to make this show about them, not me. So let's do this. Um, I want to say thank you to all the wrenches for showing up here tonight to help us run riot. Um, I want to thank my buddy, Lord Thoth, a gentleman and a sweetheart of a man uh, who is just always out there in front of this, uh, in front of the, uh, of everyone and behind the scenes, just being the very best friend anybody could ever be. I want to thank my buddy, Larry, 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 Larry is the quintessential Southern gentleman who is just such a sweetheart. And he's always out there promoting my friend's channel and building up this community and supporting indie authors. So 
I just love him very much. And I just have to say so. Um, I want to thank Eric K for everything he does, um, especially keeping me in stitches behind the scenes. You the best, baby. I want to thank Chris Persia for his gorgeous, glorious um, show posters that he splashes uh, all over social media, turning it into a cinema foyer uh, for everyone to see. Um, and please don't forget to keep uh, Chris Persia's dad uh, in your prayers. Uh, we want to keep him healthy and happy. And you know what? Your love works. I also want to thank my buddy Gwagnar and my buddy West Cagle uh, for always promoting this show and for uh, being behind all of us. I also want to thank, especially this week, uh, there were some pretty incredible cerebral and very, yeah, they were very educated um, reviews of my stories and they blew me away. And so I really want to thank JT Kirk and uh, Michael Beacom. Um, these are two very intelligent men that know a lot about science fiction and the way that they interact with my work. It's like it's they create life fulfilling moments for an author. You know, a lot of authors die unknown. Edgar Allan Poe, um, you know, H.P. Lovecraft, people like this, they died with nobody knowing who they were. And so uh, it's pretty incredible to have readers like I have, and I am eternally grateful for them um, as friends and as readers. And I will always work very hard to meet and exceed uh, their expectations of my work. I also want to shout out Enigmatic Drop Bear. Um, please uh, keep sending that love, that love and support to Enigmatic Drop Bear. He is battling the big C and we are team Enigmatic Drop Bear. So please send your love, your support, your prayers, anything and everything. Throw it all at him because he is a beautiful man. Um, and and uh, like I said earlier, your love works. You know who else could use some love? Philip Story's mom, uh, his mother-in-law. She has not been feeling well. And uh, whenever I think of Philip Story, I think of his mother-in-law and him just dropping in the chat that, you know, he had to pick her just very quietly and, and meekly just said, I, I had to pick up my mother from the mother-in-law from the hospital. Uh, sorry, I'm like late, guys. I mean, just such a humble and marvelous human being. So, um, and I also want to shout out Apollonie's minion. Um Apollonie's minion sent me a four foot hand beaded poster of the Holy Trinity with, uh, with uh, Uhura. And it is just drop dead gorgeous. I'm going to Michael's this week to get it framed. And I'm so very excited. I mean, it's humongous and gorgeous. How did they, she send that? I mean, you have to, that's a crazy packaging, right? I it's, mean, it's not just that. I mean, the, it's not just the artwork and the, mo the money she spent on the artwork. Effort to to you would it. yes yeah the packaging to get it here so that it wouldn't get damaged the enormous and i mean enormous fees she paid to have it sent to me and then i actually had to pay once it got over the border again so this was a huge oh yeah thing you have to, to pay do. the customs when it comes over the border yeah yeah and so here i here i am with this beautiful human being sending me this incredible art and i mean it's four feet tall and i think it's around four feet wide as well so i mean it's massive and this is going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life because it's going up in my family room and so talk about being an incredible human being who just reaches into a stranger's life and says you're my friend I'm listening to you like a radio station um, a, a couple of times a week, and I want to give you this. I mean, she's an incredible person, and I just want to send her all of my love and thanks. And then the crazy lady says, what a sweetheart of a woman. She sends me a collector's plate of the no 1701. Way. No bloody wow. A, B, C, or D. And it wow. even has the plate rest. So um, what a lady. Was it the same package or like a, she had to send it as another no, separate package? No, it's the same package. This oh, woman same. She is... was able to fit it in. Okay, good. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Like the plate? No, she sent that plate. completely different uh, to a uh, oh, completely wow. separate. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. This lady, like, this was extraordinarily expensive. And I just, and the artwork is just fantastic. Yeah, it it's mind-blowingly yeah. good. So I just do you want me to show the picture of it again? Yes, just so please people, do. Yeah. yeah. Let me give yeah. me a second to call it up. But let me put Polly's minion uh channel up here so everyone can follow yes, her. Please. Channel. She just walked in the room. Adventures hey. with, with the truck dog. Yep. Hey, Paula May. A Polly's minion and the pepperoni. The pepperoni. Oh. Ba, ba, so let ba, me ba, show ba, that. Ba, ba. 
I'll have to do the shout outs and the shout outs, but we can wait for that too. Yeah, Yeah, and so with all the with that out of the way, because that is just the most, like I said, the most crazy, beautiful, marvelous thing. And this beautiful woman is going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life with her gorgeous, humongous artwork in my family room. I am just so honored, so flattered, and so incredibly grateful to my talented friend our talented friend, Apollomy's Minion. Now, before we go any further, and I'm going to hustle my buns, folks, I promise, um, I'm an independent artist, uh, an independent author, I mean. Um, And the reason for that is uh, I don't, I'm not an activist, and I don't write about activism. I only write science fiction, and that's not being published right now. So I have a second book coming out, and I have a patrons, like kicking it 18th, 19th, Uh, and maybe early 20th century style um, by having patrons. And so I want to call them out because without these folks, um, I can't do my work. And so I want to thank them. I love them very much. Uh, Thank you for your generosity, your kindness, and your friendship. I love you. Larry, Larry, Tony Stark, Sean Carter, Penny Lane, Shuta, uh, Gwagnar Dave, Chris Persia, Scuba and Leslie, Pete, Eric Kane, his trusty dusty dog, Kirby, who is back from China, Enigmatic, Drop Bear, Michael and Cassandra Beacom. My goodness, what an eloquent, loving, intelligent, generous, kind couple. I just love you both so much. I'm sorry about your new working hours, Cassandra. I hope you're going to survive them. Mark D with a C, Antiderivative Jill, Maximum Redstone, JJ Cook, Dabman and the Dabman Clan, Lord and Lady Thoth, and of course, Lance. Please chuck some cheese in the chat because we have so many pepperonis here tonight. Rob Altus, Tyler, Jeff Wyatt, Rod Thunderheart, Mazerus, and my buddy West Cagle. Thank you for backing my book and I will get it into your hands as soon as possible. And now I'm going to be quiet. I, I, like I said, I have lots of thanks, but you know what? I, I have lots of thanks because I have a lot of really incredible people in my life because of this channel. So I want to thank you all and send my love to you one and all. And now I'm going to pass it back over to the boss. Boss man, let's do it. All righty. Okay, dokie. So that is beautiful work, Apollo. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see some show noties and shout outies, everybody. Let's see what is today. Wednesday night. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow night at the great J Man's channel. It is fan the beginning of Fantastic Fridays. That's right. Uh, yeah, for Fantastic Four, we're starting. Uh, we'll do four issues a week. We're going to start reviewing everything that the Jack Kirby, the legendary Jack Kirby run on Fantastic Four, one through 102 and all six annuals. If you're a comics fan, you want to read about, you know, start chronicling the adventures, the how it all began, of the Fantastic Four, the most important run of all of comics. Um, one of the greats. Uh, we'll check us out. This J-Man's channel. There's a link in my description below. We'll get his link up in there in the chat so you can go to his channel. Please like and subscribe. Please go to his channel if you're not already and subscribe and check it out again. Seven Eastern, the Mount of Nights. Um, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantasiastic. Absolutely. And so there'll be a. Awesome. Nick, well, I don't think. Yes. Uh, just while you're in between posters, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, uh, but you took a breath to do a poster. So I thought you should know that Ravenscroft has been having trouble sleeping lately. And so Ravenscroft may have to drop. Uh, the reviews early and sends his apologies. Ravenscroft, I totally uh, understand. No Next apologies. week and the week after that, I have to get up at five o'clock in the morning for work. So I totally understand and we're not upset with you at all. Please oh, go no. ahead and do that and I go will ahead. star them, okay? Yes, leave the reviews did... of the episode right now if you'd like to. We'll just star them and we'll yeah. We'll read them. So anyway, so if you do that, need to get man. to sleep if you do need to get to sleep, I recommend Echo or the new season of Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> uh no, they don't they want to No, you don't want to give Raven to have nightmares. nightmares. <laughs> Dude. True, true. Sorry. Jeez, Mark. Damn Come it, on, Mark. Mark. Your Mark. agonizer, please. <laughs> oh. God damn it, Mark. Oh, Echo is so boring. All uh, right. Well, that's not the here nor there right now, is it? We gotta get these things out of the way. Um no uh, Friday Night Comic Shop talk tonight for Nick and the gang, So, but we'll, he'll be back next week, of course. 
Saturday night, Star Trek returns with four more scintillating episodes of Star Trek Voyager starting season six. Oh, my God, only two seasons ago. Thank you. Uh, it's, not, it's too much. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. And then coming soon to a clobbering times near you. I'm not sure exactly sure when or how, but I'm going to rank going to rank every episode of Star Trek, the original series, maybe even the animated in the course of the movies. That's coming soon. And then, of course, end your week in geek on the great Mark D with the C's channel. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yep, we'll be back. Sunday night, Geekery, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Times. Might even get a little eatery going on, you never know. And then, of course, Monday night, it's the B Monday, so as you know, I'm back here at a special time 6 p.m. Central Standard Time every second Monday of the month, the Beat Monday, where my good buddy, J-Man, joins me for a trip to uh, Earth B, Wacky World of Bob Haney presentation, a Clobby's Classic Comics Review. We will review uh, World's Finest number 221 from 1974, The Super Sons, and it's going to be, well, like all Bob Haney comics, going to be Wacky McWacky Face. And so that's it. And then, of course, the few, all the rest of the shows coming up as the usual standard times. So, hello, 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 everybody. Now let's do some shout outs. We'll get down to beeswax. Uh, of course, uh, the great Eric K., the Bronze Wrencher. Chris Persia, Vindicator Wrench of the Great White North. Good to see you, buddy. D. Bud Martin, the Wrench of Iron. Lord Thoth, God of the Wrenches. Avon lives long, live the Legion, buddy. J Man, Wrench without fear, partner in crime on Earth B. Buddy's daddy, Thorin Vegas. Stephen Cowell, the Super Wrench. The rascally wrench himself, Phantom Outsider E. Our own music meister, Maximum Redstone. And our triple boinkle wrench, Larry, Larry, Larry. Three times, you say? That's hey, because hey, hey. he's a man so nice you should say his name twice. I prefer thrice. Larry, Larry, Larry! Larry. All right, so let me uh, run the chat back, and we'll say hello to our friends in the chat. That's how we roll up on you, especially for the clubhouse. FKHC2005, Mark. I mean, hey, Tim. Tim. Hey, Tim. Tim, Thank Tim, you. Tim. Oh, man, oh, man. Good to see you. Me and the Bud Monkey. Hello there. Me and the Monkey. Gwagnard. Gwagnard, man. You know? <laughs> yes, indeed. Gwag, let me tell you something, dude. Uh, I was kind of just kidding around last night about people uh, <laughs> watching uh, STD. You didn't really have to watch that shit. I mean, uh, watch I, it? He I didn't watch it yet. We'll read his review later. Uh, he, he sent Yuck. me a review. Why? Ew. Because he, look, he was nice enough to go, even though I didn't want him to, I was kidding. I think we owe it to him to read his little uh re yeah. his little review. Why are you doing that to my buddy Gwag? I didn't. I so I didn't. I, I was teasing last night, saying I'm going to order two of you to go watch that shit. Yeah, well, challenge and accepted. Then, <laughs> it is Gwag. But and then two people actually he did actually. So I'm like, wow, dude. Now I feel I feel bad enough as it is. I'm sorry. Usually it's Gwag. me that gets stuck watching Discovery. Thank <clears> you, yeah, but nobody killing my pain. <laughs> yeah, but you watch it on your own accord. I never tell anybody to watch that trash. <laughs> Gwag so, is gonna have to shower for two weeks to get the stain yeah, was, of this off of his life. I was, I mean, and I was. It'll be as an interesting write up on it though, so I'll read that in a little bit. Uh, Dave C. Dave. All right, Dave. Brian Hepburn. Hey, Brian. Evening, Brian. Penny. Penny. Let's see here. Uh, uh, the great 1701 text, buddy. Text is here. Yes, sir. Um, hang on. Ravenscroft, of course. Evening, evening. Um, let's see. Adrian James, hey there. Good evening, Adrian. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> yes, indeed, ishness. Um, I'll get to your question in a second, Adrian James. I promise, because we're going to talk about that a little bit. Not much. So, Michael Beacom. Michael and Cassandra Beacom. I think Cassandra is listening in, but she's in bed. Well, I was going to shout out Cassandra. You think I'm going to forget Cassandra? <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. 
I don't know. Buzz Cassandra. Um, let's see. Vulcan lives. What's Vulcan up? Vulcan lives? Or lives. Either way, he wants it. Vulcan I don't know lives how. matter. They don't, actually. I mean, they do. It's illogical for them to matter. Okay. Uh, it is illogical. 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 Quite logical. Illogical. Captain. Illogical. Illogical. Could not be raised for the comment, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. Um, Brogu from my old hometown. What's up? I am sending <clears throat> a smooch for Brogu's face. You need a little kiss on your cheek. And uh, it is good to see you. Thank you for joining us. There you go. Scribe Light. Hey there, buddy. Good to see hey! you. Hey! Uh, hello, hello. Um, 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 thing. I'm um, sure we're getting um, everybody. Um, 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 That's what I think. <laughs> Once again, you have crystallized my thoughts eloquently. Oops. What happened? Oh. Well, I'm going to, I got to show the, I'm going to get in the slideshow ready, so. Suzanne Eckstein, hey. Good evening. Uh, um, um. Make sure you got everybody here. It looks like I've gotten everybody. I hope I didn't miss anybody. All right. So there we go. All right. Where were we? You know, I never got a chance to read that Star Trek comic. What? Totally forgot about it. But we'll let you. <gasps> I forgot about it too. I thought we were just doing that. You nice guys. Stuff. We'll let you review can, it if you want. I can no. read the comic as we go along, though. No, I mean, we can read it for next week. Clubby and I haven't read comics before. So sometimes it's. Remember, I don't, I, I don't know anything about comics. Yeah, so get it's out of here to read them quickly, but um, I just totally freaking forgot. I'm mad at myself. I'm looking at it right now, trying to catch up, but it's wordy. <laughs> it's got lots of words in it. And then you know me, I can't read. Is that one of the Most American Contact comic, comics mm -hmm. with too many words in them? No, I mean, it's yeah, I mean, some of them have that. It's not like Chris remember Claremont the, or anything, but yeah, there was a comic a few years oh, ago. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> it was uh. <laughs> Batman comic and it was written like a novel. It had like you know with a gazillion yeah. words in it. I'm trying to remember if anyone the Phantom must remember that one. No, Who the heck uh, wrote that? I never finished I mean, reading it. It was so damn long. It was like an illustrated story. It's not really like a comic, but anyway. Yeah, but it, it came out as a regular issue in Detective though. Oh, it was horrible. Well, Larry, Larry, I'm gonna read them both. I just, I, I it absolutely slipped my completely slipped. I should have made a reminder. I'm a moron, idiot. And then I was play, having too much fun pissing off Twitter today. <laughs> what in the name of heaven is this? Because today, twi uh, I angered Twitter. I twi I triggered Twitter. No, he didn't. Um, well, just a few idiots. 43,300, I believe, were the, uh, were the amount of impressions and interactions with that Oh, you tweet. got 43,000? Clobby broke the internet. I think it's a little extreme, but sure. I mean, no, that's that's what the cool kids say now. They're like, "Sleep sweet, oh, okay. bro." And when you like, when you have a big, when you have a big post, they're like, "He broke the internet." Anyway, oh, is that how you do it? Oh, okay. Would you like well, to explain to our viewers at home, especially could not be reached for further comment, who's like, "Hmm, how so?" I'll show it a picture of it. All right, for those who were following any social media geek of a geek. Um, of a geek nature yesterday, then you'll know that there was a big story about the latest Marvel movie casting idiocy. And um, we were talking about it last night on the show. Of course, talked about it on the Loki show before that. The uh, Marvel, uh, Kevin Feige idiot Marvel Disney announced the casting of, uh, uh, what's that lady's name? I don't remember her name, but um, something Julie Julie Garner or something is going to be yep. playing the Silver Surfer in the upcoming it's so called Fantastic Four movie. Joe Dog, Joe Dog. Oh, oh. So it's it's the Fantastic Four movie. She's going to be playing the Silver Surfer, but they're not even they're not they're not gender swapping Nora and Rad, which would be horrible anyway. They're they're use they're using uh Shalabal, his woman, his you know his. A uh, wife from Zen Law, girlfriend, wife, girlfriend yeah. wife from Zen Law. So, who was in some comics, mind you? Anyway, I just posted this, which I thought was pretty innocent. 
I wrote, Norn Rad is the Silver Surfer. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Steve Rogers is Captain America. Bruce Wayne is Batman. Kyle L. Clark Kent is Superman. Matt Murdock is Daredevil. Bruce Banner is the Hulk. Ben Grimm is the Thing. And Shalabal is Shalabal. See how this works? Thanks. Logic now, I, was impeccable, Captain. Of course, this triggered some buttholes to explode. <laughs> some butt hurts to explode. Oh, now they're no, calling the FF exploded. story. Exploded. Place alternate dimension. Um, yeah, they're talking about some kind of alternate dimension. Okay. And some idiots tried to defend it. Look, if you don't, if you're fine with that, then whatever. I don't care. I mean, I think it's horrific and stupid. This is not like some some characters, even though I don't like their other iterations, they there are definitely characters that have multiple iterations of different men. It's stupid, but these idiots just wasted a whole bunch of money on a movie with no called Captain America, Brave New World, with no Captain America in it. And there was uh, the early test screenings are so bad now they're reshooting it, but it still has no Captain America in it because it's not Steve Rogers. Sam Wilson is the Falcon. He's not Captain America. You can call him what you want. He's not. And they realize now they're, they're going to release that bomb and they've wasted so much money on it. It's going to lose money, but it'll come out in about a year or so. Um, they don't get it. Changing characters like that, that are so fundamental. Uh, I mean, it, it, they do it. It's one thing to do it in comics. Every time it's been tried in comics for, for the bigger characters, they always, within a year or so, revert back to the real deal. It's just the way it is. I mean, they did it to Captain America like two or three times or whatever, one or two or three, and then they, it, it's always bring Steve Rogers back. Like, they just did yep. again. Okay, so, um, so for people who don't read comics, I think it's important that we talk about the fact that this wife or girlfriend only appeared in two comics. No, she appeared in a lot of four comics. comics. No, four, a lot more than four, four no. Well, as the as the Silver Surfer. But, yeah, as quote, the, well, all right. Yes. Well, yeah. What happened? What, and not even all right, there's what they call for uh, those who don't know. This the six one six Marvel Universe, which is the actual real deal Marvel Universe. There are a couple of other you know coded numbered universes that represent some outliers, like some alternative universes. In 1999, Marvel because I always say Marvel see Marvel do. DC had a big hit a couple of years previous called Kingdom Come. So Marvel came out with a what I consider to be a pale ripoff of it called Earth X, and it's not very good. And Alex Ross, unlike with Kingdom Come, who did the interiors of Kingdom Come, hey, Princess Fiona. Hey, hey, hey. Fee, fa, fa, fa. Yeah. Unlike Kingdom Come, which, hey, DJ Play Nice. DJ Play you. Nice. Rock. Hello, DJ. Try this again. Unlike with Kingdom Come, Earth, which had Alex Ross interiors as well as covers, they just had Alex Ross covers and really bad interiors, but I usually like Jim Kruger, but the story just does eh. But it's an alternate dystopian future of the Marvel Universe and all that all that jazz, and uh, there's a point in... in, in, in do you, I don't know if you read that, Mark, but there, there was... Um, I've read it. Probably when it came out. Ago. I can't remember much of it, yeah. Fra it was just some bullshit about Franklin Richards grows up to be Galactus, which was stupid, and then uh, but there's a bit in there where Norrin Rad, who is the Silver Surfer, uh, gives Shalabal, shares his powers with Shalabal, so they become like two Silver Surfers. In a few, two or three issues. I've been doing a lot of research today because, you know, I stopped reading, following a lot of the Marvel shit um, a good while back and in a lot of DC shit. So and it's easy for something to slip through the cracks that I didn't read. And someone can say, hey, they did this. Don't you see this? I go, no, I didn't read that shit, so good for you, whatever. But that's why, whether you think you know it all or not, or how long you've been doing this, it's always good to do research and make sure. So did you, you reread it today? or I, went, I didn't reread. Or Earth X, you don't have to reread. But but there were idiots, I'm not going to name names, who last night in a, some kind of gotcha were talking about, well, there's precedent for this. Hey, Wes Cagle. This precedent for this, and then we're citing Earth X, which is bullshit. Don't give me Earth X. That doesn't count. It's not even in the regular Marvel Universe. I mean, if you just want to say, by the way, not going to be unreasonable here. If you if you if you're silly enough to think, and that, yeah, I do think you're silly. If you think they should do that with the Silver Surfer, then just say it. But don't use Earth X. You sound like a moron when you do that. I don't care who you are. You're dits if you do that. So. And again, and some of them are all saying, well, they didn't say they wouldn't have Norrin Rad also. Well, why wouldn't they? Where's the casting? And if they do, who yeah. cares? They're still saying she's the Silver Surfer, so screw that. 
Also, I looked for some other comics and I consulted some experts and I have some good experts at my disposal who remember stuff way better than I do a lot of times. Uh, and I, and hey, to hell with experts. Marvel's own database doesn't show anything. She was never the Silver Surfer. No. People, people keep coming into the front, so she's been the Silver Surfer. No. No. Also, because some of these other characters that I named have had other, like, have been, well, people say, it's not a, it's a mantle, it's a legacy. And I, <laughs> I came in there early on and said, look, it's not a legacy but or a mantle because the original creators did not create them that way. A big corporation owned them, quote unquote, owns them through nefarious means, incidentally, and then decided to turn them into mantles. And uh, I don't care about you saying Stan Lee said that either. It's not true. Hello. Uh, I have a mantle for the Silver Surfer. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah, especially him. That's uh, a one, one of a kind character. Welcome. I mean, your title is stupid, girl, but I don't, you know, so don't, but how are you doing there? Says, how you doing, will, stupid girl? Thank you so much her. for joining us from X. From X. He says, uh, well, she said, man, well, you, you want me to put that back up? I got it. Next, okay. they will pour old uh, Norrin Rad and a, a bronze surfer, or maybe the pastel surfer. You mean uh, the bronze surfer like this, Eric K? They also, the um, stupid girl <laughs> also put this one up here, boss. The fluorescent surfer, yes. <laughs> Who knows? So anyway, my whole point is, I posted that and I got a million, <laughs> billions of jackasses mad at me. And look, it's just an opinion. Oh, well, oh there, well, Infinity. Okay, it's Captain Infinity. Oh boy. Well, hello. Good there. evening, Captain Infinity. Good evening, Captain. <laughs> Now I like that name. I was like, I don't want to call anyone stupid, but you know, except for the not true. I want to call a lot of the people who wrote to me on Twit Twat with their you know, with their little silly little fifis hurt and their butt hurt. They were stupid. But anyway, some of these idiots, they're not gonna go through all through it that much. All these idiots are but there were plenty of look, to be fair, most people agreed. Hey, what's up? Loki. Hey Loki, but didn't you hey, know a couple of times that Darla Deerling, Deerling was also the thing? So it's just a mantle you could pass along. Uh, what'd you say? Darla Dealing. Remember her from the FF issues you never ran who wore garbage. Things. Garbage. I know, but it's just so it's so ridiculous for people to uh you know to say that it's a mantle and, and, and it was all temporary too when it's you it's not a mantle. Yeah, you did Batman's Dick Grayson took mantle. over as Batman for a while, but that was because Bruce Wayne was out of commission and then Yeah, but are you guys Batman are you guys familiar back. with uh, Thanks, Julia Garner? Yeah, the actress, yes, yeah, she's on yeah. some stuff on Ozark. Have you guys watched her in Ozarks and stuff no. like that? No, but she's my not wife loves out. that show. She said, well, Ozak, Ozak well, Ozak I have fabulous. Thank, I want to say thanks to Loki real quick, though. Thank you, Loki. Do what you do, Clubby. Tell the kids, I think. Thank you, buddy. I know you'd have my back. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, not not at all, boss. It's a busy conversation. Um, you don't have to apologize. Um, yeah, Julia Garner, of course. Um, I'm a fan of hers. I've I've watched almost everything that she's been in, and she's a beautiful girl, but um, uh, she's she's young and she's very talented, but I think it's also the fact that um, she has like she's a great actress. Don't get me wrong, but she's she's extremely tiny. She is very very frail, um, and she's known for having like super pasty like pasty white like pale yeah, almost yeah, yeah. sickly skin, and so she has this look of like heroin chic to her. So you don't really expect her to be in in a role like this either because she's teeny tiny. She's like you know paper thin, um, and you know I don't see her as a superhero or even a villain. Uh, she that you're talking about somebody who would be the, the ideal candidate to be in like some sort of a uh, postmodern um, science fiction dystopia or in something about that has something to do with like, you know, intravenous drug use or, or something to do with vampires or, or some type of fantasy where she was, where she could play an elf. It's also the fact that I don't even know, like, let's say you're all for this. You don't know anything and you're all for this, the, this, this beautiful Julia Garner, she's going to be the new silver surfer. I just, I don't buy it after watching her and everything that I've watched her in. I mean, 
it, the, if if you are unfamiliar with her, you really, really need to go and watch the Ozarks, watch her other work, and, and just sort of see, like, there are times when her hair is so bleached out that it looks almost like as if she's balding, like, she has a, a very sick look about her, like, almost like something that you would see in, um, like, a period piece, somebody suffering from tuberculosis or something like that. She has that real, like, yeah. vampire, pale you know, sort of arsenic poisoning kind of look to her. She she looks sickly. And so I'm just wondering how that's going to translate to e being a superhero or a supervillain or whatever the, the Silver Surfer is. Because I'm not a geek. I don't know anything about the Silver Surfer. But I do know this. When I look at Silver Surfer images and I look at the Silver Surfer comic and I look at Julia's work, I don't see a superhero there. I see somebody who no. should be starring alongside another actor in like Sid Vicious's, um, uh, you know, biography or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like she's, yeah, I, I, mean, she's I, I don't think she's the right like character. I don't think it's good casting, Clobby. No, I mean, even if you were just casting the actual Shia LaBeouf character without making her um, for example, without making her uh, the Silver Surfer, which is patently absurd. Hello there, Simply Steve. And yes, I understand that there are different her heralds, yeah, but yeah, this is not a mantle, but most of these other ones aren't either, but these morons don't care. I want to be so clear about something. I'm going to show what Shalabao looks like, the way she's supposed to look like here. But before, I want to be clear about something. I'm not just, when people come on to, <laughs> look, if you like this Fine. If you just have an opinion that you like it and you and you think I'm, you know, whatever, wait and see. I, it's not that that's a problem, but these I'm calling I'm not calling people idiots for disagreeing with me on this. I'm calling people idiots for coming onto my timeline and, and, and attacking me just because I have an opinion. They there are one or two people just came on there and had a conversation about it. They ask, Well, why do you think that? And that's fine. But a few people were just jackasses saying, I don't know anything about comics. What a mess me. You must be said you must be new to comics. Another one said, well, uh, it said something like that. When I told him how long I've been reading comics, he said, well, you must, uh, or been buying, it said, well, you must not read them. Okay, then whatever, dude. And hey, Zacharot, what's up, buddy? Zacharot. So, when you're coming in there and you're saying stupid shit to a stranger because they hurt your little fee fees, because you don't think that, de and by the way, I stated to the first one, and I wasn't going to repeat myself a million times. I said, the original creators of these characters. Did not mean for them to be a mantle. I'll give you an example of a mantle character. Lee Fox the Phantom, who was strip, uh, first appeared in 1936. Uh, the Kit Walker character that was the regular in that series was the 21st Phantom, because every time a Phantom would pa uh, in that in that part of the world would die, uh, one of his uh, his uh, you know successors, son and you know, whatever, would take over as the Phantom. So the Phantom is a legacy character. Even though for, for like 190 years now, it's always been Kit Walker. As once in a while, it wasn't. They've done other stories with other phantoms as well. That's fine because the creator said so. It was what it was created for. All these characters were created. Uh, their creators never came out and said, "Yeah, yeah, let them pass it down to other." Now, no, the and of course a lot of them were gone. A lot of them were not in control of their their fate of their characters or in Alteris. Hello there, but. They they're not legacy characters unless the creator makes them that way. Now the 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 crappy corporation could do whatever they want. Did Jack did Jack Kirby draw Shella Bell? He didn't create her. It was he was created. She was created later, Larry Larry. But he did draw her in that 1977 or eight, whatever it was. He did it actually, and it's the, one of Marvel's really first graphic novel. So then the Stan put his name on, but Jack wrote and drew it. It's a Silver Surfer book that Fireside book which you may have she's in that so jack has drawn her in that one i was just you know i have that somewhere uh Oren says um before anyone gets mad at me for this debate they already stated that it's a different reality and that this ff movie is to bring them to the universe we like she is ss in that reality well that's all fine and good i realize it's a different reality now i hear what you're saying Arn. that's true it doesn't make anybody who was a fan of the Silver Surfer happy. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. So this character is 99.99999, pretty much to 100% identified by people who are fans of the character as Norrin Rad, 
not Shalabal. So this is Kevin Feige being an idiot. Kevin Feige, screw you. You're a moron. You make stupid decisions. And your movie's going to tank because you're a jackass. People would love to see the Silver Surfer in a movie again, better than that last time. But no, you're going to do this garbage. So and anyway, this is Shalabal right here. As opposed to, you know, I don't want to show that crappy Mike Allred stuff, but does that look like that girl to you? What's her name? Julia Garner? Julia Garner? No. And the thing is, is that people are, are showing her in a wig and stuff like she has long hair. She has super thin, baby fine, white hair. I believe it's dyed that color, but I'm not sure. And it is permed, like a very, very tight, tight perm. Um, and uh, it does not look like her at, at all. I'm just trying to look up her height, but I'm pretty sure she's she's also teeny tiny. So like I said, like when I think about her, I'm a fan. I, I think that she is an amazing actress. But when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is a, a total miscasting. This woman is talented, but I, I yeah, this is a miscasting. I just, I don't think yeah. it's going to work. And it's just, well, it's just stupid because I get, why wouldn't you, it's your first movie. You, and yeah, the alternate universe excuses is what they're going to use. It's their excuse. To, this not, We all know they're using that as an excuse to cast a female character, to, be, to make a, a uh, they're doing a gender swap, but their excuses, we're not going to say we're gender swapping Nora and Rad. We're going to just uh, use a female character that uh, was part of, you know, part of his canon and we'll just use his girlfriend instead of him. He'll probably get his get killed. He'll probably fail, and she'll have to take over. And the fool's using this here. This is uh, Alex Ross cover. It's cropped. It's the cover of a uh, Earth X number, like number twelve or nine or something. And Earth X, it's great Alex Ross art where he used he shared his power with her. It's another universe. People using that as an excuse or the other universe excuse. I mean, you're right, Oren. They've used it's them using the other universe excuse but I just don't think it's a good idea. It doesn't even make any practical sense because he's a, he's one of the most, he's not Batman or Superman or Spider-Man level popular, but he's pretty popular. And he's been around you know, 56 years, or 58 years, I'm sorry. And yeah, so people, a lot of people are big fans of the Silver Surfer, including me and yeah. Mark here. And yeah, nobody but, wants to, but, what fan wants say, to see this? Yeah, I bought most of his comics, and I always tried to collect that first eighteen issue run. I'm missing a couple issues, but uh, and I'm back anyway. Sorry, I was out. My my better half. I can half tell you're out, out of breath. We can all hear you breathing. I just yeah, want to well, jump was... in here and say that on the internet, that uh, they're saying that she is five three or five four, um, and that uh, she weighs uh, 115 pounds or 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 less. So, um, like I said, we're talking about a teeny tiny woman, teeny tiny. Um, she doesn't look like a superhero or a supervillain. She is neither one of those things and has cultivated an image of her natural look, which is like a vampire, like somebody, you know, in the 1800s who is, you know, suffering from, from arsenic poisoning or TB or something like that. Like she, she looks quite sickly and she's teeny tiny and she's best to play like some type of elf some type of a vampire uh some type of heroin addict or something like she has a very heroin chic look and she's cultivated that uh she is a, a like a like imagine a pixie uh, like a sprite but super gritty and and that's her look that's her but she's too small i mean goodness sakes like i want y'all to think about this I'm five, eight and a half. This woman is five, three or five, four. What? Like, where's she coming up to? She's coming up to my boobs? How is that a superhero? Well, hey, real, whatever, real Wade I'll... Nation, what's up? Hey, Wade. Hello. Um, well, I just talked to my better half who uh, is in a tournament and she beat, they beat two guys and two, the two ladies beat two guys in pickleball. So she was happy about that. And she loves Ozark. I asked her, I said, the, you know, asked her about uh, Garner, and she's like, "Oh, she's an amazing actress." Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah nobody, I mean, maybe it's going to be all CGI. Her. No, no, I, I agree. But she, she's, she doesn't even know who the Silver Surfer is. My wife, maybe she does, but I'm like, she's yeah. Well, be neither do I. Yeah, but th that's neither here nor there. But I'm, you know, a huge, longtime fan of the Surfer. That's one of the characters I always tried to collect, and 
buy all the issues of you know whenever I can get them or afford them. And it's a slap in the face to fans who want to see this. I mean, maybe if you did this like you know five movies down the road, you did an alternative universe and you travel. I, I hate this multiversal crap anyway, where they're trying to bring Miles Morales in and all these other. The multiverse is just such a such a, a weak uh, story uh, crutch. And uh, it's a slap in the face to fans. Of this. And they said that she's going to be the Silver Surfer. It's not like she was cast as Shia LaBeouf. That'd be fine. I wouldn't say anything about it. I mean, I'd say, well, maybe she's not big she enough. Don't look like this, though. Look like, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I could I could live with it. you know. With, right. This girl you know, doesn't have a relative. single muscle in her body. She's a waif. <sighs> Well, it's probably going to be all CGI, like the Hulk, maybe. You know, I know, but that's ridiculous. Where are like they're they're always saying, "I want to see myself on screen." Well, then why? Where? Where's? Uh, where is this generation's Brigitte Nielsen? Look at that. That's Shia Ball by Burn there. Yeah. And, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Hulk. Like Red Sonja. Yeah. Like our Red But it's Sonja just a total hat. insult to have you know take one of the beloved characters, Jack Kirby's creation, that Stan, Stan tried to take credit for and couldn't. And uh, and to have you know have him relegated to the sidelines. I mean, granted, we haven't seen the story yet, and people are trying to make excuses for what's happening. But why would you do that to anger the fans? I mean, you have you announced Norrin Rad as Silver Surfer, then you announce her as Shalabal, and then maybe you surprise us during the movie with something. All right, you give her the power cosmic. You you shouldn't, or maybe she becomes a surfret for like two minutes or something, then loses the powers again. Uh, but they've got to play this game with. Uh, you know, wrecking our legacy characters, or changing our legacy characters, so they think they know better. And there's plenty of female heroes out there that they could have. And as I always say, I look around my room, look at all these female superheroes and action figures and statues that I have. It's not like there's. You have a shallow bell figure. Of, look, I don't have a shallow bell. That's, a, that's never, a custom. That's a custom. Yeah, they. I don't think they ever made one, that's, right? I but, I heartily disagree, Max Redstone, because um, I've watched her and she is. She has a gaunt look to her face. Like it looks like she had like uh you know like a way uh an actress who's a little bit heavier than her would go for one what do they call that buckle fat or buccal fat removal. She has pronounced uh cheekbones extremely white and pale. Yeah, she looks like like I said earlier, she looks like she should be opposite of someone starring as Sid Vicious and and you know they're telling the the tale of of you know how heroin kills. The, it, it, she and she's cultivated this image you know what i mean she is a vampire she's a pixie she's an elf she's a she's a heroine or a crack addict or whatever that that's her look uh, a gritty tinkerbell uh, i and she is a teeny tiny woman who is paper thin um and i i just don't know how that's going to work out well, the worst part is she's playing the Silver Surfer. We're not even discussing this about her playing Shia LaBeouf. They're, they're, they're uh, you know, they're planning to re replace Doran Rad as Silver Surfer. That's, uh, that's where they're going. So, you know, right away we, you know, initially like kind of like the casting or could live with the casting. Uh, kind of a kind of a surprise in terms of the what they went for. And maybe, uh, you know, the casting of Mr. Fantastic, I think, is could be the weakest, but we'll see how Pedro Pascal does. I just don't picture him as Reed Richards, but give him the chance to win me over. But you can't do that. And why are they starting with the Silver Surfer? Why Galactics should not come first in a movie. You, you start with Dr. Doom, I would think, you know, in a movie or, or the Mole Man and, you know, fighting the, uh, you know, the underground uh, denizens and a big monster, maybe. But uh you don't go right for the silver surfer that that should be a, like a two movie epic or a three movie epic of course kirby got it done in three issues i guess but uh i think yeah, no matter what you care i think no matter which side you're on and you don't mind that there's a gender swap i still think as a person who's not a geek and i don't know anything about the silver surfer i don't have a dog in this fight so i'm switzerland i'm completely neutral i, I think, think paco would be very angry I think this is a total miscasting of 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 what should be a superhero. I've been watching you guys put up this this silver surfer stuff up on this show now for four years. I've been hearing about it and mm -hmm. seeing images of it. And if I'm a casting director and I'm thinking, who am I going to get to play 
this silver surfer, male or female. It's not someone who's 5'3 or 5'4, um, is barely over a buck, and um, you know, it has a ghost-like or sickly appearance to her. And and you know, it, it just doesn't it doesn't fit. I mean, we we needed somebody like uh, a Brigitte Nielsen here, if you're gonna make that argument. So Sydney I think Sydney Sweeney. Well, I don't know how tall Sydney Sweeney is, but for me, like when I'm looking at a hero or I'm looking at a supervillain, I don't know what the Silver Surfer is. What I'm saying is, is that somebody should have the body to do that. Now here they they make all these complaints about all these constraints made on women, um, you know, to lose weight, to fit into things. But, you know, men have been ha have had to fit into these same girdles uh, on stage in, in Shakespeare and, and on film. Look at look at William Shatner. He had to wear a girdle. And then but it's OK if we give men meat eating disorders and treat them like crap and they take a whole bunch of anabolic steroids so they can be bald and ginormous in films. I mean, I just. It, it, these are the same people who bitch, whine, and moan that they want to be able to, they want that realism, they want to see themselves on screen, and, and they want it to be as real as possible, and why can't we, we have the real thing up there? Well, she doesn't really look like the real thing, does she? Do, do you, when you think of a superhero or, or a supervillain and you see the Silver Surfer, are you thinking of a woman who's 5'3", maybe 5'4", who's, you know, like paper thin and, and gaunt and, 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 you know, super white skin and, and hair so delicate, like baby doll hair permed right out, who looks like, who's known for looking like a vampire? I mean, I'm, what I'm saying is that... Nobody should be saying, oh, what are you complaining about? This is great. I'm saying objectively as somebody with no dog in this fight, this looks like a mockery to me. It looks silly. And I would it never, is. ever, ever think of that woman uh, who I loved in Ozarks, by the way. I am a Julia fan. Um, I would never think of her as a superhero or a supervillain. I think Paco could take her. And Paco night, is Benny. three pounds. Good night, Penny. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Penny. I hear you. <clears throat> and again, just to be clear, if anyone trots out the Juno character, that's that's bullshit too. She, it was like a, a Her Hercules. She's like the daughter of Hercules in a miniseries from like 2010, which um, her name was Juno, not Shalabal. She became uh, she became a female version of the Silver Surfer in that comic for like it lasted four issues, and she never appeared again. So that's bogus. When someone tries to bring up that to you, tell them, uh, -uh that's nice try. She's not Shalabal. Just so you'll know, I forgot to mention that earlier. Yeah, I mean they've it had kind of heralds of pictures. Galactus, but there's really only well, one Silver Surfer. I mean, Norrin Rad. He's Norrin Rad's a Silver Surfer, more yeah. so than any of the ones that I mentioned that uh, their names taken yeah. from them. This is just horse crap, and it, Kevin Feige is an imbecile. So he is using. I don't know if he used Earth X. By the way, there's no way he knew about Earth X. Do you think he's read Earth X? He hasn't read a comic. Of course, never. I've never have either. Apparently, according to people on Twitch, that. Oh, so, you don't know what they're talking about. You're um, a subject matter expert. It's, 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 well, that, you're, I thought you're I part really of the comic it. book cabal. <laughs> not enough, I guess. But point well, being, Eric, ever in back. Clobby's first comic was written in stone. That's how many comics he's. Written. Yes, Clobby came <laughs> yeah. down from the mountain with the first comic book written on stone tablets. Everyone knows this. I just want to give a shout out to Michael Beacom who said, "Oh." You know what? Is that the actress they're getting to play the silver uh, surf smurfette? Good Lord. This was like Tom Cruise playing Jack Reacher. No offense to Tom, but he just couldn't. <laughs> Michael Beacom, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like casting uh, can can really make or break a film. I mean, it, it's just to me, it's preposterous because it's not just that this girl has this look. It's that she's cultivated this look. And so when you think for it, that's what you're waiting for. You're waiting for gothic horror. You're waiting for some, you know, rock star movie that that tells the story of, you know, why drugs are bad. Or, you know, she's some sort of fairy in, in some sort of fantasy. This is a teeny tiny Tinkerbell um, who might be shooting up. That's that's her image. That's her look. And she's beautiful and talented. But whoa, whoa, this is such a misfire in casting. And I, and I have no dog in this fight. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And uh, again, it's me. It's this is ASP4H. This is about as bad as this kind of thing gets. They've been doing it for almost every character. Not almost, but most characters 
have been had to put up with this kind of crap. The one we I least expected, I least would have expected. If you just said make name me five that you probably won't, no one will ever probably mess with. Because how could you really? Uh, yep. Surfer Surfer might have been one of them. I'd be like, yeah, they're just gonna do them the normal way. Why wouldn't it? But no. Well, there you go. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, this is so out there and so stupid. Like, it's a way to sabotage your own movie before you even get it off the ground, you idiots. I so, got to respond to Oren here. He yeah. says, Raquel, you're judging a book by its cover with uh, that statement, though. You can change many things about appearances in movies, hence movie magic. Uh, and I don't know what the rest of that means. Well, I just want to say uh, yes, to Oren. Norin, he's saying yes, Norin is so. He's agreeing about Norin Rad being so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, Oren, I just want to say, no, I'm not judging uh, a book by uh, its cover. It's it's the fact that you have original source material and a, original source material is created by a single person. And if you want to turn it into ip then you have to be beholden to the original source material that's statement number one number two i think it is completely disingenuous i think it is completely insincere and inauthentic for the, uh these same fans to make these uh physical demands on men uh, but there is a, a load of his hypocrisy when it comes to women you you shouldn't be able to take a woman who is five two or five three or let's say she's even 5'4", and, and she weighs about 100 pounds, and you put her on screen and you add a whole bunch of CGI to her. Now, is that fair? Is it is that really fair when you watch um, actors like Hugh Jackman, actors like Chris Hemsworth, actors like The Rock, who are uh, you know are beholden to these insane workout routines where they have to eat when they don't want to, they're they're throwing up because they don't feel well, they have to cut weight. There are days when they do nothing but drink water and and eat bitter chocolate. They eat, they have to eat terrible amounts of protein and it makes them sick and it makes them feel awful. And then they have to go and they have to have a personal trainer and they have to work out every day. I mean, I know lots of guys that lift Orin and there are a lot of guys out there that have like eating disorders and even like um, gym addiction due to this double standard. And so, you know, if, if we're expecting this from our male actors, why are we going to turn to to AI to to make it happen for a woman? Does that seem fair? I don't think it seems fair. I think it 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 sounds like somebody talking out of both sides of their mouth. And to me, that's extremely disappointing because when all of this started four years ago, when we first started talking about this on the Global Geek Gang, it was really about evening the score. It was about women reclaiming the narrative and showing that they were empowered. And instead, we're getting this, which is just a whole bunch of double talk and hypocrisy. If women are cheering in the in the in the theaters when Chris Hemsworth uh, walks out and we get to see his glistening muscles and uh, or a, a superhero climbs out of bed and we get to see his bottom and all the women cheer and they are and they are working out for months and months and months and punishing their bodies to make that happen. No woman who is teeny tiny who is known for looking like an elf or 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 some type of supernatural gothic horror being. No woman should be able to just climb on on a uh, camera and then do the rest with CGI. I think that's BS. I think that's. They would have never done that scene with Hemsworth where they stripped him down in his birthday suit and made fun of him and laughed. Could you imagine if they did that to one of the female characters? No, never happened. no not now. Never happened. It's not been happened, happened in other movies, but no, no, it's just all right. So you know, look, and the thing is, she's even if she were just playing Chalabelle in the origin of Norn Rad, she's not a good casting for that either. It's just not a good cast. I can't imagine what she would, would be a good casting for as far as a superhero movie, but not a superhero like you were saying, number one. So, um, let's no, see. when I see her on that on that board that that flies in space or whatever, um, I'm going to burst out laughing. And um, and how is that empowerment? It's empowerment when 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 we put a teeny tiny woman on the on the screen, and we have to ask. Uh, artificial intelligence to make her look masculine and taller and, and all these things. I don't understand all of this aftermarket stuff. It's okay to find us a beautiful Brigitte Nielsen. She was wonderful in Red Sonia. I loved her growing up. I thought, uh, I thought as a teenager, I thought she was the coolest ever. And so 
I just think it's a lot of bullshit that people are slinging to make themselves feel better about a whole bunch of hypocrisy and just bad casting. This has nothing to do with, with women's liberation. This has nothing to do with cinematic reformation or, or agency. This has something to do with somebody just picking at a wound. And it's not going to wind up. They have to do a whole bunch of stuff with a computer to make this girl look like a superhero. They'll just prove everyone's point. You're going to prove mm -hmm. all of the critics correct. And if you're yeah. sitting at home thinking to yourself, oh, this is some right wing crazy lady. I don't read comics. I'm not a geek and I'm not right wing. I voted liberal for 30 plus years and this show isn't political. But I'm just saying if you're sitting back going, oh, it's it's the basket of deplorables that are saying this. No, it's me. I'm a social scientist, and I actually think that this is fake reformation. This is fake empowerment, especially if you need a computer to do it to you afterwards. What does that say about the aesthetic? What does that say about women? Yeah, this is even be a, a woman. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. It's done so that Kevin Feige can score his points. Because see, about two months ago, they released the FF cast, and whether you like that cast or not, they do at least visually reflect the, the ones from the comic in terms of you can't even say anything without getting in trouble now. Like they're, they're closer demographics, their demigros or their skin colors, whatever you want to call it. And that's unheard of. I was that shock, that casting shocked me. This doesn't shock me. That shocked me because I thought it was good. Well, I'm not going to say what I thought they were going to do. So when they did that, they has he has a lot to make up for with his little demos or with his little, uh, with this little um, crowd that was probably not thrilled with it. And he probably took some guff over it. So now he goes, he's doing this. The rest of this cast is going to be atrocious, but the movie's going to be trash anyway. Let's let's move on to our next. Some people are just bad choice for casting, not, not due to their their ability, but their physicality. Absolutely. Bravo, Chris, Chris Persia. I agree. So it is identity politics, that's all it is. So it is, and it's not it's empowering. Virtue signaling. Because no. Yeah, and it's not empowering for me as a woman, me personally. I don't speak for all women, but I can say that I know when somebody's being as fake as a $3 bill and, and hiring a teeny tiny woman who's known for looking like a heroin addict is not a way to, to reform a, a comic book mm -hmm. character um, and gender swap it. That's just not the way. And, and the result, what's going to come out on the other end of it is, is not going to be pleasurable. It's, this is picking well, at a scab. And but it's not good for anyone. Hiring any woman. I don't care if they hired a woman that looks exactly like Shia LaBelle from the comic. Hiring her to be the Silver Surfer is my biggest problem. And that's wrong. Silver yep. Surfer is Norrin Rad. Screw off. Uh, what's your face? Uh, Kevin Feige. If anybody but Norrin Rad is not acceptable. Even if she wasn't this young lady. See, her casting is irrelevant. The fact that they are changing it to Shia LaBelle and changing the gender of the, the the title giving the powers to her anybody what i don't care if she looked perfect i don't care if she's my favorite actress in the world it's still it's bullshit norn rad is a man screw you Figgy. and that's i agree all and, I have to say about that. and i hope when we go are stuck going to see this movie because i'll probably go see it anyway i hope they better not be out of snow caps because then i'll be really pissed at least snow caps can snow get me caps. through the movie they no will be out of snow caps <laughs> That's that's beginning uh, to be a serious national problem now. You can laugh, but there's I've seen I've been to a couple of movies recently where there were no snow caps, and I'm not happy about it. Yeah, so, that's, uh, a, that's a yeah, big problem. Big problem. All right. So how, how about we get on to our uh our our review? We're we doing Blake we Seven. Blake first? Seven? Yes. And then we're gonna do the night night stalker. Are we red re? We yeah, are ready for up, Blake yeah. 7, Season 2, Episode 8, Hostage. This first aired on February 27th, 1979. Yeah. So, Boss? Well, I'll wait for a... Yeah, yeah, let me just put this up on the, the screen okay. here. And let me press play. All righty then. Thank you. There we go, folks. All right. Hostage. Uh, can you imagine what her body is going to look like? And Silver Surfer doesn't wear the clay. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. Hey, David Glenn. Good to see you. Okay. Um, Hostage, like you said, it is episode 21 overall, but it's uh, for the season two. What is it? Eight or seven? Eight, right? It's see. eight, boss. Eight. Okay. Eight. <clears throat> um, let me see. Yeah. Uh, Blake and crew are sitting around lining their own beeswax when. Uh, 
they're attacked or they're eventually they're they're attacked by Federation pursuit ships and um getting a bit of a dust up with them being chased all over the place in the meantime Silverland at the Federation headquarters or space headquarters excuse me uh what do we call it space command headquarters uh, is um in a meeting with Counselor Joban and he, uh, there's an interesting play by Kevin Stoney I like that guy it was always uh, Kevin, the great Kevin Stoney, who was one of Doctor Who's best, uh, villains in Invasion with Patrick Troughton. Anyway, um, and so we see some of the politics coming involved with uh, what's going on with Serverland, how the uh, the council and the president and all these people are not necessarily happy with her handling of the Blake affair. Anyway, there's that going on. In the meantime, Blake and crew have their hands full with an attack. They're, they end up being, you know, making a, a couple of g cool moves and getting away from the main pursuit. But then all of a sudden, boom, 20 more pursuit ships coming in, in this big battle. And, uh, they they take some damage, but they're able to escape. And, uh, even though this, uh, this, uh, commander of this one ship is, uh, barely misses them. And these mutoids are, you know, he's got these mutoids with him. We'll get to them later. um, Blake and crew receive a message from Travis. Yes, sir. Elvis Travis has called them, and he basically has a strange message for them. Blake, he says, I hope you, I hate you all so much, and I'm going to kill you one day. No, I didn't say that. Basically, <laughs> boy, no, uh, Travis basically, oddly enough, makes a proposal to Blake. He says, you know, now that I'm on the run from, from the Federation as well, you know, perhaps, you know, if we, we can wait for the Federation to pick us off one at a time, or we could join forces. Basically, he wants to make a truce and make a deal with Blake. Well, of course, that's silly, but of course, he, when he adds the details that he's at the planet X-Bar, a place Blake has visited as a youth, on which minor offenders of the Federation are, are kept and allowed to live there, on which his uncle and his cousin, yeah, he's got, I'm not going to go, I, he's got he was on there when he was much younger, and he kind of had feelings for his. Is that his first cousin? His, his cousin was yeah. He said it's his father's brother. That makes you first cousin. Us and yeah, so it's um, super gross, and it's, it's in very, my notes, and it's, it's super yeah, it's, gross, it's, and it's, it's very, in my notes. Is that a, is that a well, it's not that's not illegal to marry your first cousin in Connecticut. It is. Okay, get out of here. Get out. Leave. Get really? out. It's, I just Take said your it's not illegal. And Leave. Get out. <laughs> okay, but I'm this just, is the future. <laughs> Is this, a very is this a very British thing, by the way? I, 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 I'll just leave that pass. I've always kind of wondered about that. Maybe it's no big yeah. deal. Maybe she's adopted. I think she's adopted. I'm going with that. Get out of here. She's not adopted. No. I'm trying to make the episode I don't know. work better. Okay, from now on, she's adopted. We're going to go with that. Thank Ew. you. Uh. Hey. So, uh, the Dukes of X-Bar, Max. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, uh, Avon is like, are you out of your mind? You know, it's a trap, right? And I love that there's a great exchange, a great conversation about how it's obviously a freaking trap. But, in, <laughs> and they, by the way, Blake's not, even Blake's not naive. He you knows, yeah, well, he thinks it is. So, why are we going then? Because you heard him, he's going to kill the girl. We got to go there. And, you know, he wants to save um, Inga. Inka Tinka Bogovna, na na. She was she was important to me once. He says, so, uh, but she's just as we pointed out, she was adopted. Thank you. Yes, gross. And she, and well, she is hot though. Come on, she's kind of cute. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not her cousin. I can say she's hot. She's not my cousin. Yeah, right. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that too. But anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I love you. Oh my god, you're killing me. All right, so basically they go to uh X Bar and uh you know Blake sets up a course for it. Avon is against it, and Avon might have done something about it, but we don't know. Hmm. <clears throat> what what's Avon's gonna do about this? Anyway, so eventually they uh arrive at X Bar. And Blake goes down by himself, of course, because uh, well, there's some great exchanges, but I won't go ahead and quote, like stuff like you are still it's you are still assuming that they will risk their lives for you. 
What's the matter with you, Avon? But again, I'm never lying. I, I, I'll quote him all night. But anyway, so he goes down to uh to the planet X bar and, and meets up with his uh uncle, his uncle, his uncle, Austin. Meanwhile, um, Serverland has received a message at, at Space Command headquarters, and uh, wonder what that message is. So she gets she gets in a ship, uh, by the way, and, and she basically kind of uh, almost seems like she's kind of sneaking out of there, and she gets in a ship to head to Exba with two mutoids on the way, and they're false the ship there. See the fact there's a cool space battle right there. Yes, this, I don't know. I kind of they've grown. I, I kind of like the. I always like the uh, Federation pursuit ships. Yeah, they're cool. But the Liberator's way better, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. So um, the galaxy. Yeah. So Ushton basically, you know, tell him, you know, reminisces with Blake. Finds out that Blake, you know, no, you know, he doesn't even know that what Travis wants to do to Blake. He didn't even know about it till Blake told him. But he said, you know, even you came, you came here, even though you knew he wants to kill you. So, well, you know. That was good of you. So he sends, he tells Blake where to go. And, uh, but before he does that, Avon decides to beam down. He wants to teleport down. And, uh, the, the, the girls, everyone's like, are surprised. What? But you're against all of this. I know, but I'm still going down. They can't understand it. So he goes down. And then, uh, Callie started to, has started to kind of sense something off of Avon, like something's wrong. And when he, when he teleports down, she says, of course, it's a trap because Avon thinks so, and Genesis Avon always thinks so. This time, he feels responsible. Why should Avon feel responsible? There could only be one reason. Well, of course, we find out what the reason is later. Ba ba ba. Avon goes down. He's spying on Blake and uh, and Ashton. Uh, he noticed that Ashton was faking a limp as uh, Blake goes out to strikes out to go after up to this big up these mountains of this big where this uh, big tower complex thing he is. Um, Avon. Tells Villa to come down, uh, much to Villa's chagrin, who doesn't want to come down to that planet because it's very cold and Villa's chicken. And he tells him basically, I want you to watch him. Make sure he make sure he stays where he is. And I love the scene where he tells, uh, I know you're probably gonna clip it, but if you didn't, you probably would. When Avon tells him, watch him. If he uh, if he if he leaves, stop him. He says, how? He says first before that he says, uh, are you? He says yes, because I got my gun. He says don't use it unless you have to. But then he tells him. He says, stop him. How? Kill him. Oh, marvelous. Kill Blake's old uncle. <laughs> he tells him to kill him. I love it. Love <laughs> yeah. it. Kill him. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but Villa couldn't kill a fly, even if he wanted no. to. So it's Avon goes after, uh, yeah, he goes out, up. he goes after to follow Blake, the trail Blake. In the meantime, Ustin easily catches Villa because he's a dumbass. But I do, oh, there was the other exchange. I'm freezing. And there was this, well, freeze in silence. <laughs> oh, good old Avon with that snarl. So he gets caught by Ashton, meaning uh, Villa, and of course he beat, you know, pretty much intimidates the truth out of him. What's going on? In the meantime, of course, Blake gets caught, and because of uh, Villa, um, Villa being giving everything away, Avon gets caught, and Villa's caught, and they're all brought to this complex where uh, Travis has crimos. Uh, working for him now. Not even mutoids now. He's got these crimos. He's, is that the uh, first time we've heard that word? This is the first time. The first time we'll ever see crimos. Okay. These uh, apparently these nut jobs that are very dangerous and un, and uh, you know in, in, unreliable. Although they they seem to be under Travis has them under control. Uh, and one is of superior intellect. Moloch is of he superior has intellect. Very high IQ. But he enjoys inflicting pain, and that I'm a true criminal. Yeah, right. So yeah. this this <laughs> sort of makes you think like that these are special criminals, like that Travis went to death row or something to get them because they're <laughs> they're like sociopaths or psychos or intelligent and scary. And that one scary guy is stuff. super creepy. Well, that guy is creepy. So uh basically they all get caught. In the meantime, Servalan is on her way to X Bar. How does she know they're on X bar? So we've got some. Uh, eventually, uh, and when they're caught and they're put into this chamber, uh, <laughs> there's some fun, count and more fun uh, bits between the characters. And Avon uh, basically 
tells Blake that he sent he sent a message to Space Command. What? He said, I thought yeah, I sent the dogs on Travis. What's so strange about that? Why? I, I thought they would get in first and save us the trouble. So uh, it wasn't a uh, villa says, so this is all your fault. How do you arrive at that conclusion? I'd be still on the ship, not for you. So anyway. Yeah, that's a great line. Yeah. I love the scene. I love the scene that they're showing right there where she made the mutoids take this. This guy, yeah, he you know, didn't catch Blake, but no one else ever catches him either. She's been pulling a Darth Vader right here, although it's before Darth Vader used to do it. Surprised she didn't have the dude killed. Those other mutoids that were driving the ship had didn't have that same hairstyle. Was no, that because the pilots because... don't? No, it's because remember they're cyborgs, right? So yeah. the yes. ones that are pilots, they haven't had anything done to their brain. Like their skulls are intact. Wherever you see that black tar stuff, that's like that stuff that has been added. So okay. um those ones, I I I don't think those ones feed off of blood from the jugular. They don't insert a straw out. in your jugular and drink. These are different ones. I I think all of their cybernetic implants are are in their in their bodies and in their suits not not their craniums so if i yes. wanted to ask one out on a date i would go for the pilots not the other ones yeah you would you would go for the ones that have the the Don't cybernetic my, implants like my from the neck down yeah, yeah. from the neck down <laughs> <laughs> you ne you never know what could be bionic if if, if i'm making myself clear mark <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but we won't go there. Bionic yeah. Kegels, Bionic <laughs> Mutoid Kegels. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> what? I look. <laughs> I'm going to be quiet now. Hey. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> they get caught and all that stuff. I'm probably leaving stuff out, which is going through quickly. So uh, they're ca they're caught and um, well I'm way way up front of this aren't I? Oh well, it's okay. Uh, Travis browbeats Villa into giving him the uh, the tele the word for teleport teleport the, the word the word the word. Max was quoting that earlier. The word. Yeah, I have to clip that one. <laughs> I love that. So. Uh, but there was really no word. It was just telling telling Callie or uh, Jenna to teleport yeah, them but, up. I mean, yeah, but they no needed him to. Code. But they needed him to say it, really. So yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, no, it was no secret word. But they needed him to beg them. You know, they wanted to scare Billy. Yeah, Travis is pretty smart. But what was the only thing was dumb that Travis, when Travis was uh, like threatening Ushton by ben, uh, having his primo like Ben Enga's uh, arm, said, "Which is who is the weakest of the three? As if you don't know, it's Villa." I mean, granted, I guess he just doesn't know, but does he think Avon or Blake or I mean, he could look at the three of them and go, yep, that's the wimp. The other two aren't going to talk. Yeah, but you can so. only do that because you're a superhero. If you weren't the thing, if you were not a giant pile of rocks, true. maybe you wouldn't know. Yeah, but Travis is pretty smart. He knows Blake wouldn't talk and he knows, you got to know Avon. Yeah, I know, now. but people are your superpower, Clubby. Oh, that's it. So you think it was necessary, he just wanted to torture what's her face? I think he wanted to torture what's her what's her dinkle. Okay, that's fair enough. And I mean, you know, why not? Well, he is Travis. So, yep. What's her dinkle? So anyway. <laughs> and so they teleport Molak up to the ship. Tim Stock, what's up, sir? Good to see you. Tim Stock. Hey, hey, hey. They teleport Molak up to the to the Liberator. And there's Jenna and Callie. They try to almost you know, he gets holds a gun on him, you know, basically threatens them. And makes them show him the flight deck. In the meantime, uh, more stuff back down on the planet. Uh, interaction between uh, Avon, basically Avon, uh, Villa, and and uh, Blake are about to be uh, suffocated in that room in there. And Travis is enjoying it. And, of course, uh, Ushton, you know, now learns that he's going to kill him. Which is, what else do you think I was going to do with Blake, you old fool? So Ushton starts to take matter into his own hands and uh, to help uh, the others. So he and basically he and Inga help free. They attack. They 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 double cross Travis and and help free Avon, uh, Blake and Tavilla. In the meantime, I love the I love I love how the girls take care of the the crimo dude. I mean they just uh, Callie. Uh, there's a scene where uh, the scene where um. Primo wants Callie to, to teleport down with a bunch of bracelets with him. 
and uh, Jen is about to teleport them down, and Callie very smartly at first tries to go, you know, not doesn't put a bracelet on, but the, the criminal's too smart and makes you put on a brace. And the brakes, so one thing left to do, and Callie just takes a shot at him, kicks him, distracts him just long enough for him to, to get lose enough balance, knocks him back, and then <laughs> uh it was a little silly the way it looked when it got into space, but it was pretty cool. He exploded. Cool. He exploded in space. Awesome. That no, was awesome. No, so it was cool. not awesome. Why did he explode? Jenna, Jenna uh, of the vacuum of space, right? Isn't that get out of here. Get up. He should have froze to death, but he but, did not exploding. For those, for those who don't know, she because they wouldn't let me tell you, he, she teleported into space. Now, now react. <laughs> they don't know that. <laughs> so not He's all dead. That. He's all dead, not no. mostly dead. <laughs> But I mean, I'm just saying they don't. I was trying to tell them that. So anyway, you're right. They exploded. Well, <laughs> I can't. I have an easy answer for you on that one, Miss Sporty Pants. What? He has an explosive personality. Oh, that's punch. it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Are you saying a person wouldn't explode like that? I'm saying a person wouldn't explode like that. That's true, Max. Though. <laughs> Too many fireworks. Never, has, he did, never this been is done Black, before. Though. Brian Blessed. Uh, that's what Brian Blessed did in the in the, in the episode Sickness Alpha. Remember the continuity. <laughs> yep. But are you? Well, you know, maybe he had some explosives on him. Ever think of that? There, that that could be something we could write into our head <laughs> cannon. <laughs> I mean, that's a possibility. I mean, go with it. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> It was the 4th of July. Yeah, in space. In space. But anyway, that was pretty cool. Though they, the final 4th of July. It, it was cool that the way the girls handled it. That was awesome. True. So, I love this uh, lady uh, mutoid here. And it's <laughs> weird. because It is weird that she doesn't have the... Maybe she's just gonna... Maybe they changed. Some mutoids don't have that crap on their head. So. Well, That's yeah, but she about, has all yeah. that neck stuff. Ooh. Mm. So, uh, anyway... Uh, after uh, there's a fight that ensues outside in the quarry, Mel Next Bar, and uh, blah, 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 eventually, uh, it's, it's funny how you go, hmm, why didn't Ushton just kick all their asses without them? But anyway, we can forget about that. Ushton uh, is able to kick some crimo ass, and they're able to, you know, uh, they get in a, Blake and Avon get in a tussle with Travis. He shoots and, and injures Avon, but uh, Ushin takes him and Ushin's a bad mother. He should have taken all him out anyway. But anyway, uh, he manages to, to capture Travis. And I love it. Why don't we kill him now? <laughs> Let's kill him. Kill him. That's twice in the episode he wants to kill, kill somebody. Him. I love it. Kill somebody. He's right. I mean, the guy's going to, but anyway. So Blake, of course, being the mamby pamby Blake says, no. Let's just leave him for the Federation. All right. And what, second time you've done that with Travis, jerk off. Gonna Go cost you too. So anyway, he he, uh, he leaves him for the fediation, and um, they he offers to take uh, Inga and um, Ushin with him, but they say no. You know, the one thing that's good about this is Travis managed to break in this place where we couldn't. There's enough food to feed every starving mouth on this planet. And he goes, well, you know, Claude Sowling, hey there, Claude. Blake, uh, Blake says, "Well, that's done. I'll come back and blah blah blah. You know, if you want me to, cousin, who is not, I mean, who is uh, adopted though, at least. Yes, adopted cousin. Thank you, please. That was written into the captain's head cannon. Yes, yes, I adopted. So captain's captain's log, <laughs> Blake seven. <laughs> so they, uh, the they captain is despondent <laughs> because Raj Blake wants to." Bump naughty bits with his cousin. Oh well, it's the tw it's the future. They got no, they, no one lets them have any fun in, in that federation. Then they got to do something. So bumping uglies with your cousin is definitely something. It is something. <laughs> so it's yeah, but she's not his real cousin. I told you she's adopted. Uh, so anyway, yes, they yes. tell they teleport back to the Liberator, and then sit nor sit there in orbit doing nothing apparently because Serverland, of course, uh, finds finds Travis walking around. She. Um, she frees him. They make a deal. So, you know, we're still enemies officially. Yes. But if you hunt Blake and, and bring him to me whenever you can or whatever, um, I'll see you listed as dead. There's nothing more free than a dead man. 
because he told her, even, you know, I wanted to liberate her. She goes, you knew it must be something like that. So they look up and the liberator's just way up there like, hey, you guys, you know, if the liberator only knew, it could just like drop some blast down there and blasted both of them. Anyway, the episode ends. Line. What? Oh, I love that line. Nothing more free than a dead man. Yeah. There's nothing more that's free brilliant. than a dead man. Yes. So anyway, that's basically my ridiculous, idiotic way of, of summing it up. Review. But uh, thank you. That was just a bad synopsis, but it was something. So no, it was marvelous. Simply thank marvelous. You. Thank you, my dad. So uh, that's my sum up of Kissing Cousins. Uh, like seven episodes. <laughs> I mean, hostage. Well, they didn't kiss at the end. That was just a, a cheek. That was a kiss on the yeah, cheek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. not. Hey, it was totally sexual. No. He was on the mouth, <laughs> and it made Jenna give him the hairy eyeball. Yeah, Jenna didn't like that, did she? Hey, Sean Carter from jealous? Mars. Sean, Sean Carter, from, Carter Mars. from Mars. Dun, dun, Ranger Power, buddy. Oh, hello. You don't bum uglies. You bum so, uglies. So, I love you, though. <laughs> I just told my best so, friend. I just bummed uglies bummed with my uglies. third cousin. He slapped me and uh -huh. told me to stop counting. Yeah, um, yeah don't count. But you, you bump, you bump uglies. Uh, don't bum uglies. Don't do not do that, Sean Carter. Sean Carter from Mars. And I'm loving your uh, video, Sean Carter, on your uh, uh, Jupiter 2. Oh, man, That's Jupiter 2. Yeah. John, Sean Carter. Great. Yeah, the Jupiter awesome, 2. Man. Oh, it's greatness, buddy. Mm -hmm. So A lot of nice details, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So Sean um, is super talented. Number one. Yes, boss. You have, you have the floor. Uh, what are your... Uh, views and notes, indeed, of course, on Hostage. I have the floor. Can I have the bridge, too? Um, yes. Okay, okay, just temporarily. Here we go. Um, I love the opening shots of the Liberator and space and the beautiful planets. Um, I'm a true sci fi uh, fiction fan, so I love this aspect of it. Uh, I also love practical effects. Um, Avon thinks out loud about their pursuers' intentions, uh, getting the ship, not destroying it. Um, and, and he talks a little bit about, you know, anticipating them not trying to, uh, you know, harm the Liberator, to damage the Liberator, because he's cogitating and, and you know, one of his possibilities that he's auditioning is that they're after the Liberator. And he's right, but when they come at him 20 and 30 ships at a time, they do want to uh, damage the Liberator. Um, and he's shocked by that. Um, <laughs> Villa needs a tipple. I like how he gets in, in crap from Callie. Callie's like, look, this is just supposed to be for medicinal purposes. And he says, no, no, more Andorian ale. Um, cool costumes. I love the mutoids uh, with hair because the collars and, and the suits are a maze. I love that Avon is so far ahead intellectually and technically that he is on the cutting edge of technological developments. I love that they fit into this episode that he wants to sell um, the tech that he is developing to the Federation on the side. He's got a side gig. Um, I absolutely love the fact that this show is so cerebral. It is true science fiction. They love details. I like that it is in time units, not days. And then I wrote in my notes, I love you with all of my heart, Blake Seven. I want time units. I don't need days. What do you mean days? Which time days? <laughs> so I love that they put time units. Um, I also just randomly put I love Avon. And I do love Paul Darrow. That is a man Thank who you. needs his entire face smooched. Um, Servalon is merciless. And Joban, the counselor, is decidedly evil. He's so proud of, of uh, his, you know, his evilness. Um, yes. The dialogue here is divine. It goes on for a few minutes and the banter is perfectly excellent. Um, I This is my second or third time watching this episode. Um, and I could watch it over and over again just for that dialogue. That is a great exchange. Um have I told you all how much I enjoy the entire idea of mutoids and the fact that if you have damage to your body and you need anything removed, they just slap some black tar on you. And uh, that's where Travis gets his meatball eye. And that's why some <laughs> of the mutoids that are missing their brains, they need blood. But some of them, they have like a cute little haircut and, and all the stuff that's happening down below is it's all bionic. It's, it's bionic parts. It's bionic kegels. 
Um, <laughs> Blake is a moron. I can't believe how much I don't like him on this watch. The first time I watched Blake 7, I thought Blake was, I thought Raj Blake was a great guy. I'm like, this guy's a great guy. And now like I'm, watch, I'm watching some of these um, for the second, third, and a couple of them for the fourth time. Um, because sometimes I rewatch it like two times in a row. I don't know why I'm like that. I just now, um, for I don't know, just to catch details. Anyhow, um, so I cannot believe how much I don't like him now, and I love Avon. So it's so weird. Because, what did like, you like about Blake in this one? Was just going for the falling for the trap, or I just think he's a moron. Him? He's so single minded that he refuses to listen, and he gets caught. I mean, like, dude, you're myopic. Like, what is your problem? Do you remember on the Global Geek Gang when people used to piss Clubby off and he would be like, okay, can you do me a favor? I would like you to bend your elbow, extend your left hand, place it behind your head, and <laughs> smack yourself in the back of the head. <laughs> Ouch. He needs, <laughs> do that. he needs a head smack by Clubby's command. By your command. <laughs> um, why does Buddy blow up in space? Why? Why? Because it looks um, cool. No, he should just freeze and shatter. That's all he should do. What was the first movie where the uh, the body exploded in space? That wasn't two. It wasn't two thousand and one, was it? What was the first? There was a movie where then like everyone followed it after that. I'm I'm drawing a. Was it a a Outland? Of, was it Out Outland? Yeah, Outland. You're right. Remember, yeah. blew up in Sean space. Connery. It's supposed to, in the spaceship. He blew in the spacesuit. Yeah, so everyone since then has copied that uh, explosion part. I think your no, body one, would expand. This was before that, though. It wouldn't explode, though, but you're... you're it would this instantly was that. freeze. That's my well, understanding before of it. Outline? it, it, it would, yeah. You would instantly freeze. And um, and people are like, oh, you could hold your breath and, and well, survive for two the... seconds. No, <laughs> you would not. Um, well, your eyeballs the, would freeze. The, the depends on the temperature too. of where you, you are. I mean, it could be no, extremely hot in no, space, the, no. depending on... Hey, hey there, yeah. hey there, Professor R2. Good to see you. I'm telling you, I have <laughs> live, live no. blood pressure. Look, there's a physicist here. I've actually looked into this prior at NASA. Uh, they, they, I think they've done a couple of articles on it. Yeah, your body freezes. No, but like and the moon, like if you're on the moon, the temperature on the moon could be incredibly high, depending on where the, you know, the the temperature change. The moon from, was uh, out. We saw some sheep. We saw some sheep yeah. take a walk in their sleep by the light of the moon, by the light of the star. They walked all night from near to far. I would never walk. I would take a car. That is Dr. Seuss. Let's keep going. He should freeze. And, continuity. and then he would shatter. That is how cold he would be. But and he can't hold your breath and stay alive. What if, he yeah, had some what if he had some grenades on him and they no, blew up? No, no, yeah, no. Right well, teleporter. you'd have to ask the physicist about the, uh, about the grenades. Uh, because well, I don't know. I'm not a physicist. Well, I'm watching. I've been watching um, For All Mankind, which is an amazing series, I got to say. And uh, the astronauts in one scene do have to leave the moon base to go out. And they said you could only survive for 15 seconds, but you'll die. Like basically they have, to, they have to do something. Well, they make a they make a makeshift spacesuit with all the uh, I don't want to give away too much. I haven't seen it, but they make a makeshift spacesuit uh, with the contents of what's in their cabin and they say the most you could you have to exhale all the air in your lungs and the most you could survive is 15 seconds so it's basically no. a suicide mission to yeah you can't uh, no no that's no you're gonna freeze and um and well they uh, made it what i'm saying is they made a makeshift suit to to sur help them survive but all they could do is 15 seconds at most they said you're gonna be dead after 15 seconds and these are <sighs> astronauts you, on you the, instantly freeze and all this crap from uh, all these other films where people hold their breath and they can just go from one ship to another and everything's fine. No, that's not true. You freeze and holding your breath yeah. isn't going to help you because your eyes. Well, no, you will couldn't freeze. hold your breath. No, you couldn't hold your. They go through all that, but I'm. Uh, but I'm yeah. saying is they make, even with making a makeshift suit that they had in this episode with all the geniuses and NASA, you know how they would saved Apollo thirteen. The most you could survive. Think of how short fifteen seconds is, and they said that's an outlier. Like at at the end of fifteen seconds, you'll be dead. They're basically no. Fifteen you. seconds is, is a super long time. Work in radio. Do you know how many commercials I can fit in fifteen seconds? Get out of here. Anyway, let's move on. Um, you would freeze, and then you would likely shatter because it, it, every system in your body, your bones, <clears throat> everything, instantly, like at that temperature. That's it. You're you are not going to um. 
uh, explode like um, Fourth of July. And with all this beautiful light and fire coming yeah, out and looks- sparkles. <laughs> no, no. Um, I like that Villa is a dog who is trying to sleep with um, Blake's cousin, but Blake already beat her to it. He's been banging what, his cousin his whole life and uh, gives her that? a nice sexy smooch and makes Lily Jenna didn't try um, that. jealous as he leaves. So um, this is yucky. So um, for the uh, <laughs> body exploding for absolutely no reason, like 4th of July. And then um, for the fact that Blake has been bumping uglies with his cousin, I give this a 5 out of 7. It no, should be a seen... 7 out of 7, but this is one of those action-adventure <laughs> ones. It's not science fiction like I like. I found out that Blake has been banging his cousin, and they made yeah. somebody explode he in space. Well, he hadn't seen her since he was a kid, but not been banging her. I mean, he hadn't seen her. Well, he that said he was very fond. Didn't he say he was very fond of cousin. her? He said, he said she was once very important to me. We don't know if anything happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He just, he just gives her a real sexy kiss and makes Jenna upset. That's what he did it for. Oh yeah, it's totally, to... totally innocent. I know, did... I know. When I want to make somebody jealous, I pretend that I'm sleeping with my cousin. Get that's out of here! That, that, that's why he did it to make Je- Jenna jealous. Jealous, yeah. Get Smart out of man. here! No excuses. This should get a two out of seven, but I'm going to give it a five just because I love it. But yeah, it's action adventure. It's not sci-fi. <laughs> and my favorite Blake Seven is the sci-fi. And uh, Blake is disgusting. Um, and everyone at the wedding will know one another. <laughs> and you don't blow up when you're in space. Space. That, hey, how do we know that, that in a thousand years of the future, space won't be different? Yeah. Do you want to change space? Did we yeah. like the Silver change Surfer the changed it. The Silver Surfer <laughs> changed it. Which one? The heroin chic five foot three girl? Yeah, yeah. She ruined space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's a mutoid that explodes in space. What kind of mutoid? Is it the bionic the pelvis or is it brain, mutoid. brain? I want to drink your blood. <laughs> maybe the yeah, it's nitroglycerin for blood. Ooh, yeah. Nitroglycerin. <laughs> that, that's why he's a crimo. Oh, look at Meatball Patch. Mm-hmm. So, Mark, go ahead. What do you have to say about hostage? Oh, yeah. No, I, I agree. I didn't think this was a, a as great of an episode. Let me. Oh, I've got my clip coming here. Let me uh, save my clip here. But yeah, I, it was a more of an action episode, and Raquel's hundred percent right. You know, Blake is an idiot, and he wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for uh, um, Avon, Avon and you know and taking the initiative, knowing you know it's like is he friends with Blake or he just puts up with him? You know, you're kind of left in limbo, which is part of the great acting and writing of the show. It's not like, and I'm not trying to compare it to Star Trek, but it's not like Kirk and Spock where you you know those two are inseparable or mccoy or scotty they're going to go down and no matter what you know this isn't a this isn't a, a military ship uh, this is uh, just a bunch of rebels who are banded together and and you can see the tension is always there between blake and avon you know who who's going to be in charge and who's going to lead everyone and you know right now avon's uh, uh, in charge but you're always wondering <laughs> this is uh, excuse me, Blake is in charge. You wonder if Avon's going to, you know, hit him on the back of the head and say, I'm in, I'm in charge now. Um, but uh, yeah, just idiotic going down to that planet, <clears throat> knowing it's a trap and not not having those teleport, you know, the teleport, like stay on the teleport or, uh, you know, when they teleport up, if they hear, you know, Villa screaming like that, like maybe, uh, maybe guys just be wary, like uh, what's happening here, you know, uh, be, be careful when you beam someone up. Um, but I love the way that, you know, Jenna and Callie, I love the way that that scene was great when they they took the guy out and they beamed him to yeah. space. OK, I know he wouldn't. He wouldn't explode. He wouldn't explode. Yeah, but, but the transporters uh, made him explode. The tele- teleporter yeah. was malfunctioning and it made him explode. <clears throat> True. Well, they've done that in Star Trek, too. Right. They beamed uh, they br- beamed uh, Jack the Ripper into in the space, right? So uh, did, he ex- did he explode? I think he did. He didn't. I don't think he exploded. And, did he? Uh, yeah. he didn't have a bionic pelvis. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Oh, gifts uh, and cousins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm uh, dueling the end uh, banjos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, some states it's legal. Some states it's not. I'll explain after. Okay. On next, on Mark, next bar, the fact uh, next that you're talking legal. about it being legal or illegal <laughs> is scaring Chris Persia. <laughs> I am not yeah. responsible for what Chris Persia does to you. I'm not a this. lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but 
I got a story. I got a story. I got a story. I got a I think on X bar it's legal. So I'm saying. Gross. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's adopted. Yeah, she's definitely adopted. She's but, adopted. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the action in the episode. Of course, there's some great, great quotes here. So I only clipped a couple of things, but I love Love Villa, of course, here. I could murder a relaxant any chance. It's for medicinal purposes only. You know that. This once. Well, are you dying? I'm thinking about it. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> you gotta love Villa. Yeah. And of course, Shooter! Uh, Shooter's right, here. Shooter. Of course, I had a. Uh, <laughs> I had a request for this one in the um, in the watch party. So here we go. The word is given. The word, the word. Switch the bracelet on. The word, the word, the word. Teleport! I told you, teleport! <laughs> I'm just clip the. I'm going to clip just the word, the word, the word. The, word, the, word. Tra- the new Travis is growing on me on the uh, second time of yeah, watching this around. Because he's getting better. He's getting better. Yeah, he's getting better. But it took me much better. longer. To- Longer to warm up to him the first time around because it was just such such a shock. It's because the he's first such Travis a wimp. Is... You're like, get out yeah. of here! I'm not scared of you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't sweat he's you. Not scary at all. Yeah. I don't sweat you. Yeah, it's like your grade six science teacher. <laughs> no, get out of here. <laughs> and of course, Serverland is gorgeous and deadly at the same time. You know the mm-hmm. uh, the captain who uh, was it a captain? He, he, you know he failed to. Uh, Capture Blake and uh, God, does any any villain look any better? I mean, you're the whole time you're thinking Darth Vader, but a very good looking Darth Vader. I want so, furs uh, again. I miss furs. Yeah, I love so, furs. Furs so are so her. luxurious. I want a fur. <laughs> did she wear some fur this episode? I thought she did for a little she, bit. She wears beautiful furs here. I thought oh, she did. Yeah, yeah. She looks so good. Oh yeah, she's she is wearing a full length white fur coat. Oh, this is gorgeous. So here's uh, here's her one of Serverland. I think this is Serverland's best line in the in the uh, show tonight. There's no one as free as a dead man. Yes, sir, <laughs> Mister Fibbity. And I and I love the way that um, you know Trash Serverland's using tra- uh, Travis now too, right? So she can have him. Uh, he has no real power, but he's going to do everything he can. You know, he's got no power in the Federation, no political. Uh, you know, can't do anything political to serve a lamp, but he can now she's got him on Blake's trail doing anything he can to take uh, take Blake and the gang out. And it's in both their uh, interests. So that 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 part was uh, really interesting, too. And well done. It's just great writing on the show all around. So I, I'm giving this episode also a five. I didn't think it was a outstanding episode, but it's not a bad, you know, it's it's not a bad episode. It's a it's enjoyable, but it's not. Uh, doesn't have any sci-fi concepts. You're right, Raquel. It's more of a, a chase and, uh, and and fighting. But uh, it's it's well done, and they make the best use they can. You know, they're always in a quarry, but you know they don't have much of a budget. But uh, still, the action is good, and uh, it is. You, you do the like Avon. Yeah, character. a banjos is not good. Uh, <laughs> uh, seven out of seven uh, Avons for um, the bionic pelvises. But then the the blowing up in space thing. It's like oh, that didn't bother flow, me. That didn't bother flow. me. Right? But <laughs> there were, I do have a couple of quick. Uh, are you, Mike? You, Clever? Do you want to do your review? And I got a couple of quick show sure. show notes. Or yes. You do your review, and I'll do the show notes. So All righty then. Uh, let's see. Hostage. I I have it ranked on my ranking. Uh, number twenty four out of the fifty two episodes. Um. And I give it rated. It's a rating of six. Uh, I really do enjoy this episode quite a bit. It's mostly character stuff. It's, yes, it's dumb what Blake does, but it's it's very Blake. I mean, it's not like it's not a character for him. It really isn't. He is that single-minded as an episode way down the road. In fact, where uh, they wouldn't even say to him, uh, refer to Blake's, do his face, your single-minded, your single-minded certainties, I think he calls them. Yeah, uh, but I won't finish the line because it'll be spoilery. But this is your single-minded certainties. Anyway, uh, great Avon bits in here. Uh, a lot of great character stuff. All sorts, a lot of great lines. So, yes, it's just more of a you know an action adventure type of an episode, sure. Um, but a fun one, a good one. A lot of great stuff in it. 
And uh, yeah, so you guys handled all. We did pretty much everything, and you guys uh, not really much more to say. Some good lines, t- quality, top notch, uh, exciting episode, all in all, and I love it. All right, what you got, so, Glenn Mark? I got a couple of that, show notes. Then, then I have reviews, but go with. Uh, we'll, we'll yeah, so this won't take long. This won't from take our long friends, yet. and then uh, I don't know if they're still if Ravenscroft is still here or not. Let me see, is he? Ravenscroft, are you, is, are you still here? We'll go ahead and then we'll, if yep, we yeah. pops in, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just the wiki uh, on hostage. There's the uh, link. I put that in there. And just a couple of quick, uh, they have some story notes. Um, actor Duncan Lamont was cast as Ushton, but tragically died after completing the location filming, which had Whoa. to be reshot with John Abernini, yeah. Abernini in the role. Alberini, yeah, Alberini. Yeah. Ab- Abernini, apologize for getting no, his I name wrong. Alberini, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and so he hey, that um, twenty times fast. Yeah, oh, yeah, he was Duncan, the per- character who died. Duncan Lamont was born on my birthday, June seventeenth, nineteen eighteen. I've been nearing and, actually, yeah. So good. And he was. Let's see, what has he appeared in? Because that's a track. Oh, he was in Ben Hur, in nineteen fifty five. He was in Doctor Who, The Persuaders, Adventures of Robin Hood, Quartermass in the Pit, and uh, so yeah, so he died. Uh, and so they had to re uh, recast him. So pretty well known. Uh, Pretty well-known uh, genre actor there. Um, he was in Death to the Dialects. Uh, other notes here. Kevin Stoney, who appears here as Joban, later played another character in, in, a, in another. Yeah, and, I'll just leave, well, I'll leave it out. Yeah, Animals, yep. Episode Animals. Uh, yep. Fourth season. Uh, he's very Blake similar, it, by the way. I think he's the same person. I think he's, I think he's Joban with another name. Wait, certainly has another they call name. Him. Yeah, season. yeah. But. Yeah, uh, Kevin Stoney, by the way, I will note was one of the was uh, one of the gave a great performance in one of the classic Patrick Troughton Doctor episodes, The Invasion, as a villain. Kevin Stoney, and of course, uh, he's uh, he was uh, on the great episode of The Prisoner, The Chimes of Big Ben. Yeah, uh, Blake Avon and Villa wear identical white outfits when teleporting down. These are later worn by Avon and Grant in Countdown. Yeah, those outfits week. are cool. Next those week, are good outfits. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, that's well. No, I won't say anything. Uh, this is the only episode where a character other than Travis uses the rank of space commander. Uh, Ronald Lewis was at, asked to play Ushton, but had to pass because of illness. Uh, Bruce Purchase and Andrew Robinson both appeared in the Doctor Who serial The Private Planet. And Pirate the, Planet, yeah, love it. The ratings on this episode were 7.8 million, and it was filmed in Betchworth Quarry. Regate suck it, suck, suck it, suck it, suck it. I can't speak tonight. <laughs> Sussex. Oh, God. But, um, yeah, that happens sometimes when you're streaming, you just can't form your words. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so always filmed in the quarry. It happens. Yeah. It, like, happens. it happens. Yeah. I don't think people realize, <laughs> like, if, especially if you worked all day and then you come here, you're yep. like, why won't the words come out of my mouth correctly? <laughs> and you streamed you, a few hours before that too. Yep, yep. Sorry, man. I feel you. I That's feel all right. You. Yep. I apologize, for that, but yeah. Uh, continuity. Travis's st- uh, status as a Federation fugitive was established in trial. The same episode where the de- detector shield was introduced, and I love that line about Avon says, <laughs> you know, f- f- trying to find the parts for that, and then saying he would have sold it to the <laughs> tragic. I would have sold it to the Federation. Seems like they already have one. Yep. And Moloch's fate echoes that of Vargas and Cygnus Alpha. So those are the uh, wiki uh, show notes. But uh, yeah, that's tragic. They didn't know that until reading this wiki that they had another actor and they had to go refilm all the scenes because he uh, he passed away. I think DJ Play Nice is scooting. So all right. uh, he, he just said, have an awesome rest of your night, everyone. You too, um, DJ. So DJ Play Take Nice, care. thanks for being here, sweetheart. And rock. Have a good one. Thank you for being here, DJ. So there, there you go. Um, love it again. Uh, yeah, great stuff. So I guess we'll read our reviews of our friends, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, and I have a special treat uh, to uh, Um okay. Michael Beacom actually scanned the synopsis for the Night Stalker from the Night Stalker Companion by Mark Dewidziak. Mark. Oh, cool. Does he spell his name the right way? Martin, oh no, it's not with a C. I'm so sorry you're offended. Um, no, it's more like check mark. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's oh. Mark Dewidziak and um, okay. Michael Beacon. Fantastic. Thank you, Michael. Stand them for us because he is a glorious, glorious nerd. 
slash yeah. geek. Appreciate it, Michael. Thank you. Dad man, dad man, uh, dad man. Hey, dad man. Keely Chow. You know, Keely Chow's on the other side of the planet. Good afternoon from a cruise ship that left Sydney, Australia, oh, nice. and is heading to New Zealand, you lucky dog. Hope you're having a good time, buddy. Be safe. Have fun. Professor R2 says, I did three lectures back to back. I was stumbling over nearly everywhere at the end of the day. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Like people don't hear realize <laughs> like when you're public speaking that sometimes you're you're just your brain goes to goo and, and they get so <laughs> upset with you because they're like, Why can't you talk? And he's they just don't understand. Because I'm goo. <laughs> yeah, you well, there you get to a point I'm where you're like, goo. okay. I'm Voyager goo. Yeah, well, yeah. I creatures. know. Sometimes, I, like, uh, sometimes I, when when I'm working and then and then I come home and then I'm podcasting, I think to myself, "Wow, I don't want to talk again for like another year." <laughs> Understood. Uh, yeah, I hear you there, but yet I don't. Know, I never had that problem because I've talked too much. All right, so um, <laughs> now I get burned out. But on this though, because we get to hang out with my geek friends. So here we go. Let's read our reviews. We only have two, but they're aspects, outrageous aspects. By our friends, but it's, again, it's okay for them to do aspects because they're the only ones that care to review it. I'm glad we got at least some friends helping us review these tonight. Um, Ravenscroft, I'm, if you had to run, I'm so sorry. I hope you catch this later. If so, thank you for your review. Uh, says, apologies, no apologies ever here. You never have to apologize. But I've been having trouble sleeping issues, so I may post a review and head out by 10 uh, uh, CST. I got you. So maybe I, I totally understand. Thank you so much. And I'm just glad you, anytime you need to leave a review, you can, you're welcome to it. We're just glad to have you here, buddy. So Ravenscroft says, uh, gives it a six, Avon, six Avons out of, um, out of um, one of five, six Avons. Gives it a six. Avons one of five. I'm not sure. What does that mean? Anybody figure that out? Let's see. Let me see here. Which one, honey? It says six Avons. He gives it a one six. of five. Yeah, so that's one the of first five. review. Yeah, yeah six first Avons Boy, I... out of seven. One out of okay. five reviews. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. I guess I just I needed a separator. I'm being a moron. All right, okay. No, that's okay. Thank You're you, not Raven a moron. Scrum. I love you. I am one. You can no. love a moron. It's okay to love a moron. Shin kicks. In, in an underrated episode, uh, though another botched chance to really look at Blake's past. We never get much of a family feel from Ashton or Anga, and the kiss at the end is a weird choice. Boy, is it ever. But, yeah, um, <laughs> I hear you. They should have elaborated more on that. I agree. But it, they didn't do that with these kind of shows back then. They kept it really – it's interesting. It's not like they were they trying to – They kept it in the family. That's what Clubby's reaching for right there. But, they I kept mean, it in the no, family. Yeah, but no, in all seriousness, no. They never, ever do deeply personal stuff on this show. They don't do – um, Dallas, they don't do Dynasty, they don't no. do shows that are about it, it's a they're pretty. I guess I'm not saying again, I don't, I know some British people, maybe they're just the way they conduct each other when they're in, uh, they are when they're out there, but no, that's not true either because they have plenty of British soap operas, like uh, you know, what is it? Uh, what are some of those soap operas that they make over there? I forgot the name of that big one that, that's going on forever, Coronation, Coronation Street. Street, right? So they do that kind of stuff too, right. But I guess when they, they figure if we're making a science fiction show or an adventure show or a comedy or whatever it is, we're going to stick to that genre. And sure, these people have private lives and all that kind of stuff, but you don't need to know everything about their damn private lives, um, whatever is pertinent. And therefore, it's not like a novel where they could write an Avon story. Like, you know, it was it Paul Darrow wrote one about Avon called Avon, a terrible aspect that he filled in all that stuff because it was a book. You could do that. Um, and it was an OK book. I mean, and then a afterlife that was done that was a sequel to the series by Tony Atwood. You could do that more, but in a show, you have only so much time. And Terry Nation probably chooses to, you know, to just uh, kind of get to the nitty gritty with it. So you could have, you would like to have known more about Blake Blake's life and you know Ushton and Inga and all that other stuff. I hear you there, Ravenscroft, but this is not the show. Never did that. Anyway, love Avon's dilemma once again. He's trying to get rid of an enemy and undone by conscience. Yep. Callie figures him out. So do we. He's careful to keep his concerns for Blake hidden as usual. Agreed. The opening battle is very tense and urgent. Rather wish that Commander had stayed. He was stayed. He was he was a good replacement for Travis. 
too nice a guy. You got to be a psycho nut job to be to replace Travis, buddy. <laughs> um, uh, some nice moments for Callie. She got her warrior uh, back for a bit there. Yeah, her, yeah, true. The group banter at this point was pretty darn good, and it keeps getting better. I agree. I'm with you. Poor Villa, tortured by Travis and sucker punched by Avon. <laughs> Kicked anyone needing the needing the anyway with his knee. Good to see uh, the big three together. Travis is really pawn scum here. Indeed, my <laughs> friend. Yeah, he is that. Oh, thank you so much, Ravenscroft, for that review. Too kind to have you here. We love having you here, and uh, thank you for that. Hope you'll always be here. So, the great Maximum Redstone. Wow, this Espic, yep, Eshipy Espics. Wow. This is, my goodness. That's okay. a long one. Yeah. Canadian Spider-Man! Hey, Canadian hey, Spider-Man, man. Canadian Spider-Man does whatever a Canadian spider can. Spins a Canadian web. Any size catches Canadian thieves just like fly, just like here comes the Canadian Spider Man. Never mind, you know, in the chill yeah, of Canadian night at the scene of the Canadian crime. Oh, sorry, uh, a plus <laughs> Max Redstone, you hoser, hey, you hoser, welcome here, yeah. A plus says Max Redstone, 100 percent, seven out of seven. This was my number one favorite episode. I did not know that. Wow, wow, well, it's. I love it. It's a great one. So there you go. Um, it has good amounts of everything I love about Blake Seven. When Veer Lorimer was on his game as a director, that chap was on his game. Yowzer. Um, I'm going with her. Where were I? Okay. Number two. We have the Liberator's most epic space fight yet. 20 pursuit ships. Led by Andrew Robinson. Yes, Mr. Fibby from our great episode of the Pirate yeah, from Doctor Who Serial The Pirate Planet, which is in my top ten. I love it. By Douglas Adams, by the way. And in a proper uniform. And it's so funny because I never really thought put the two and two together that much when I would see this episode a lot, that that was Mr. Fibby because he's solely different in that episode. Mr. Fibby! Moons of Madness! I love that episode. Sorry for the shouting. Along with uh, the M along with the MK, two pseudo Carol uh, Carol Brady layered haircut mutoids, plus one classic mutoid. Travis was the best Serverland had, but Mister Fibuli got closer than ever, and I wish he'd have another chance. Yeah, I'm with you. However, no one is immune to sexy Serverland's ability to throw subordinates under the bus. The dance. What if Avon were reading your uh, your reviews? No. The we dance. We should get an Avon between... voice changer from Tom. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he could do that. Could he? Right. Well, I think there's a voice changer. I got to ask him. Like, I think you can load it with a voice and then we'll copy it. You know, yes. today with AI. Yep. <laughs> I'll have to do my best. The dance between between her and Consular Consular Joban is delicious. She's still on the hook, running a standard by ten. I'm sorry. I'll go back to normal. Sorry. Uh, oh, Blake versus Oh Blake versus Travis, and now Travis has Blake's hot cousin Judy Buxton is a gilf today. Well, it is. Wow, dude. Jeez. Of course, <laughs> of course, Blake doesn't walk into a trap. He runs. <laughs> the Blake and Avon dynamic is right on track. Yes. Blake's decisions suck, and Avon is more objective. Avon feels the appropriate amount of responsibility for the consequences to Blake uh, to Blake by ratting out Travis to Serverland. It gives his character more depth and wisdom, but no more than necessary, and he gets shot. In addition uh, to swanky new thermal suits, we have lovely buildup of the Avon Villa buddy dynamic as they bring up Avaria. Yep, I love Avon Villa scenes. I don't know. I don't know always. Excuse me, I don't. I think you mean I don't always know what to make of Ashton. Yet he and, and he is necessary and well played by John Abeniri. Kill Blake's old uh, marvelous. Kill Blake's old uncle. Uh, Villa has um, a better chance at uh, betting Jenna. Speaking of whom, <laughs> Jenna and Callie make quick work of Moloch, the rejected garbage pail kid. The Crimos are loyal to Travis in a pinch, but 
They are not the best villains. Serverland comes through the least trammeled. And she now has Travis back in her pocket. She won the most. She won the most here. Finally, what seals this as my number one is everyone trying to outplay one another using each other's weaknesses. And of course, we have Travis being peak Travis. Even though it was upon it was upon Villa, not Blake. The word, the word, the word. <laughs> you, can, you can play. You can play it if you want. Yeah, I can play it. Oh yeah, let's play that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where's uh, oh, where to go here? The go. word, the word. Switch the bracelet on. The word, the word, the word. Teleport! I told you, teleport! <laughs> the word. This is uh, the cream of the gourmet drama that B seven serves up so well. Uh, Blake again displays symptoms of Rog Blake syndrome, which includes not dispatching your enemy when you can and should, and now is lusting after Daisy Duke Inga. <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to make it try to make um uh Jenna jealous. Oh well, it's imperfect. It's imperfect. Blake has a Harry Sullivan level imbecile. I love that. It's, you know, Harry Sullivan is an imbecile. Another Doctor Who reference. Love it. The Revenge of the Cybermen. Love the episode, buddy. We love all this, a lot of the same apps. Villa is the Miles O'Brien of B7, and they, refu- they reused a bunch of footage from Redemption. Ah, it's timeless and classic B7. Thank you, buddy. The great Max Red song weighing in. Okay, um, uh, Clubby, you should know that Don Don Power Ranger is here. And uh, Max wants you to know that he's actually in a grocery store right now and that he is not <laughs> shouting the word over and over and over again in the grocery store. Not the word, the word, the word. I'm now at a grocery store shopping. You should be shouting it. Come on, shout it, man. Shout the grocery it out. Store, be like, What's you make going me want to shout. My, uh, Make me want to shout. Okay, we've got oh, our wonderful Fiona. Love you, Fiona. Let's see. Fiona says, uh, since I was so disappointed in how they portrayed space, uh, space expo, how they portrayed space expose, I am going to rewrite that scene. Wow. Okay. You didn't really have to, but I'm glad well, you can. Sure. Once your body is exposed, oh, exposure, I think she meant, right? Exposed to the vacuum of space. The first thing space will do is pull out all of that annoyingly concentrated air. You've air you've got packed into your lungs. Well, that's very nice of space to do that. It, you know, a nice gesture. Then, with the vacuum of space now occupying the area in your lungs that was once uh, that was once uh, I think filled with air, your fluids will begin to boil as they almost instantaneously charge states from being liquids into being gases. 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 As these gases exit your body via your respiratory tract, they will take with them a a lot of them, excuse me, a lot of that heat you had that space was so greedily once. Your boiling saliva. Sorry. Gotta get to the next one now. Uh followed by your boiling body fluids will turn your nose and mouth into near frozen tissue as they escape your body and take your heat with them. But now your proverbial goose is cooked and 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 you and you likely will have already lost consciousness, which is a good thing because the uh, boiling fluids in your tissues, have begun to cause the tissue containing them to expand, tearing. Sorry, tearing at your nerve endings and constricting your vessels. All of the remaining, flu- remaining fluids in the rest of your body will convert from liquids to gases, as well as uh, uh, gases as well. Sorry, just as just at a much slower rate. Oh, oh, oh I got gotcha. you. Sorry. Due to them being insulated by your outer layer of tissues and some being closed systems and the laden the Leiden frost effect, but eventually space 
will have its way. I'm giving. I'm giving up. I'm tired. Sorry. Never give up. Never surrender. Every bit of heat as well as energy that isn't in the state of being matter will be cast out into the void to, dis to diffuse among the few particles of matter that happen upon the tiny frozen orbs. Okay. UDL. Well, Great. Um, Princess Thank Fiona, you. I just want to say how much I love you and I appreciate you and I never want you to stop talking about science. You know, um, every yeah. person here has an area of subject matter expertise and you are a resident physicist and I think our, our show would be less interesting without you, I love uh, you around. And I do love the fact that when I have a science question, you can answer it. So I love you very much. And um, I know it's a huge pain in the butt uh, to put all that into the stupid chat mechanism, especially with the limited characters. But I love you and you make our show better. And I enjoy your company immensely. Thank you for taking the time uh, to put science in this show. I, I adore you for it. Love you, Fiona. That is wonderful. Both Max, I'm sorry. Good stuff. Max asks, how come Princess Fiona gets the full Anglo G's and then <laughs> it, and I only get the plain old clobby? Well, I'll answer that one for you, my lad. It's quite simple. Princess Fiona is a, a lovely lady, and you are a bloody <laughs> a <Max>. dude. <laughs> You're a dude, sir. You don't deserve it. You're just one of the guys, man. So I mean, yeah, come but on. I pro although you are correct, I, I do. Since it's Blake Seven, from now on, all reviews will be read with my annoyingly Jeeves <laughs> accent. It's like uh, the addendum by Princess Fiona. Addendum: Space is uh, the is the ever present emotionless killer in the universe that's just waiting for the moment it has all the opportunity to suck the life right out of you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I thought you were going to quote Douglas Adams and say space is big, really big. I mean, you, you won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the street to the chemist, but that's just peanuts to space uh, and so on. Chris Persia, good yes. night, buddy. The midnight hour is, is close at hand, yes. In the midnight hour. He wants the midnight more, hour more, is more. close at hand, and tis the time for me to depart this land. I must make haste, for sleep I cannot waste. Good night, everyone. You that rock, was written Chris by Chris Persia. Persia. I love you, Chris Persia. Sleep sweet. I'm sending a smooch for your yeah, face. Good night, buddy. Honey. Now, Grenadian Spider-Man said something. I didn't know he was a Blake 7 fan. He, he, he came into the room, and he wants to talk chicks. So I thought you might want to hear it, and... I want. I had something to say to him about it. So if you wouldn't, all right. Today, Spiderman said, "Okay, he says uh, uh, that is the perfect size for a woman, five foot three and one hundred fifteen pounds. Isn't teeny tiny in my opinion? It's perfect. Re it's perfect, really." Okay. Um, Scarlett Johansson is five three and one hundred twenty pounds, and she looks ath uh, athletic and able to take care of herself in some to some degree. Okay, okay, I am just going to say to you right now, um, Canadian Spider-Man, although I love you, I call unadulterated bullshit. Um, I think that uh -oh. Scarlett Johansson <laughs> is a gorgeous wow. lady. I think she's I think she's marvelous, but what we're talking about is is a is a woman who's only five foot three and and just a hundred and a bit. Is that the silver surfer? And is that a superhero? And um, I wholeheartedly, vehemently oppose uh, your position vigorously uh, because <laughs> I'm sick and tired of it, to tell you the truth. Um, I, I don't want to see any more women who are five foot one, five foot two, five foot three, and even five foot four. I mean, these are super short chicks um, mm. who are around 100 <laughs> pounds beating up 300 pound men that look like The Rock or that look like Alan Richson, um, or, you know, they look like Andre the Giant. And <laughs> what's worse is, is that most of the time they're not even using their legs. And if you take self-defense as a woman, that's one thing that you learn is you can kick somebody in the face about as, as hard as a man can punch. So, uh, but they're not, I mean, they just punch and, and these women have no muscles. These women are, are frail. They, 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 they look very pretty and they're very cute, but I wasn't talking about who you'd like to date. Well, I think I'm that's who she was Canadian Spider-Man saying he finds that 
yeah, that but woman, type of that's woman not that's yeah. not relevant to what I was not saying. Not versus a superhero, though. Yeah. yeah, but that's not relevant to what I'm saying. Uh, if you want to uh, date somebody who's you know five foot three and 115 pounds, rock on, dude. Uh, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the fact that um, that that it is objectively an insult to the fans when you don't regard the original source material and you're looking at the Silver Surfer, and then some people say, well, you know, maybe it needs rejuvenation. Maybe we should put a woman in that in that role. Um, I don't buy that a five foot one, five foot two, five foot three, five foot four woman who's around a hundred pounds is a superhero unless they are magical, like beyond magical. And even then, I just yeah yeah. I mean, do you remember? Do you remember the Super Twins? The Wonder Twins and the Wonder Super Twins, the, the Wonder the, Twins or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just don't, I don't buy it. But, but the worst, the, the thing is too, though, is that I find that it is a cancer on these superhero um, films that do have original source material. They do have original stories created by individuals, not corporations. And so, if we keep taking all of these roles and giving them to teeny tiny women, um, and, and I don't care what their aesthetic is, I don't care if they're skinny, I don't care if they're fat, I don't care if they have big boobs or no boobs at all. What I'm saying is, I don't buy it, and I'm sick of watching it. And that's why I don't watch any of this crap. You'll hear Clobby say all the time, Raquel won't watch that crap because I won't. I'm not going to sit there and watch somebody who's who's teeny tiny, um, you know, kicking the crap out of, of out of monster guys. I think it's bullshit and I'm sick of right. watching it. It's not realistic and um, it's just not realistic. And you you might say, oh, well, it's a superhero movie. It should be realistic. It shouldn't be realistic. It should be fantasy. No, I, I think this generation of people who are like, I want to see myself on screen um, actually think that. And that's really sad. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm not interested. I don't know what the guys are going to say about this, what Clobby and Mark are going to say about this, but I'm sick of watching teeny tiny women beat the crap out of people that are, you know, are, are like a meter taller than them. Oh, I've been saying that for a long time. by 250 but... pounds. Oh, yeah. I agree. I've been, I've been saying it for all the time. As long as the only exception I ever make is if it's a man, like you said, like a character with superpowers. I mean, Wonder Woman is a big woman, but she also has superpowers. I mean, yeah. That's different. Buffy is a normal size, small girl, but she's special magical powers. As I said, yeah. If that girl, she shouldn't be playing. My problem is she shouldn't be playing Silver Surfer. Yeah. More and red. But if she had the co the powers of the Silver Surfer, wouldn't matter what size she was, she'd have powers like a god. So, but yes, if it's normal, like my problem is always when it's like a normal human fighting normal humans, and the girls that size, like you're talking about, throwing around three hundred pound dudes all over yeah. the place, it's asinine. Yeah, like Jessica Jones has superpowers and she's, you know, portrayed, right. you know, Fine. as a, a skinny, but that she's got, you know, she's got those powers. But my rule is uh, Sydney Sweeney can play any superhero these days. But uh, yeah, um, and if no. that's if that's what you want to <laughs> no, watch, joking, that's but, what you want to watch. No, but, but I'm just saying, yeah, you want. not successful with women and yeah. they're trying to change the psychographic and the demographic for superhero movies so that they become the all inclusive resort so that men can go and watch their, their favorite comic book heroes on film and women feel empowered by the film. So they bring their daughters. And so everybody winds up going as a family and they're trying to make the comic books um into ips that are for everyone and it's really well, eroding the original source material as well because now you can't tell stories that are are frightening or or stories that are hero heroic and and you can't tell these individual stories or even action adventure now everything has to include every genre they're completely conflated and and they have like six genres in one film uh, you can't even have a serious moment without some sort of slapstick humor, like you're watching um, Abbott and Costello. So they're they're just they're unwinding, they're unraveling their own storytelling device. I'm I I it, I am supposed to be their target audience. Men are, men are constantly told this isn't for you. Well, it's supposed to be for me, and I think it's crap. I think She Hulk was crap. Why why did they make it like that? And why? Uh, yeah, I just, I, if you're making this for me, it's not. I don't want to see this. I'm good. I, I don't well, want to watch. Like, well, imagine you take a little girl to this. 
You're raising well, your little girl to believe that, you know, if she is five foot three and she weighs a hundred pounds and has no muscle and, and she's just a waif and has almost like a boyish type body that, that she could take like a 300 pound guy who's six foot five or, or, or whatever. Get out of here. I mean, come on. The, these are role models. This, this isn't some kind of reformation of, of uh, male material redirected for a new psychographic and a new demographic. It's just shite. It's shite. Good evening, and they're missing, Hey, they're Oliver. missing out on Oliver. They're missing out of the magic of the original characters too, because it doesn't mean that <laughs> you can't have a girl that loves the Silver Surfer, loves that character. They're just trying to switch things around because they think they're going to skew that audience. And you know, my daughter loved going to see the Marvel movies with me. I mean, so it, it didn't. You know, it didn't matter that you didn't have to have. All women superheroes. I mean, but naturally that superhero demographic skews towards men, and you know the Barbie doll skews towards women. I mean, uh, Star Wars always skewed towards boys, and now they're trying to mess around with, you know, with the marketing and the you know all their charts and graphs and and uh, you know uh, research, you know uh, polls and AI to try to figure out what the best story is instead of just letting creators go with. Uh, you know, with the original stuff and uh, get some creators who appreciate the IP and have read some of the comics. And yeah, it's a movie. So I understand you got to change things up a little. I know, you know, like we didn't get Tom Bombadil and the Lord of the Rings movies, but they were still excellent. I mean, uh, uh, so it's just, uh, it's a shame that they think they've got to make this move, these new movies for everyone. And then in return, you end up just totally missing the mark and, and not making a good movie because you're not doing it for the right reasons. You're just doing it for the, uh, for the, the signaling. Oh, and mm -hmm. I did find there was a special feature I found on the, on the uh, Blake seven uh, uh, DVD uh, special commentary feature. So I just want to play this now. We could be running out of time, Blake. Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> My God, I love you, dude. Boggle, gonna be in trouble, dude. I was wondering, are dude, you gonna I love kill you, me? Man. Are you gonna kill me, or is dude? I love you, man. Like I love you. Like you, you're like my bro. I love you, dude. That was that's perfect. <laughs> Maybe a few two two extra. Kisses. Hey, do do we do you have like a dueling um, banjo bed that you can put on that? I could find like just one, at yeah. the intro. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. who's ready for our next review? <laughs> yeah, let's do the next review. Sure. It's getting late. Oh, I got late early. Wow, we better make make, <laughs> this one. make, make tracks. <laughs> That's Yogi Bear <laughs> for. Uh, I want to steal Yogi Bear's lines, but uh, let me I switch the slideshow Yogi around. Lines. Yogi okay, Bear. Uh, he, gonna... No, he didn't mean Yogi Bear, but Yogi Bear. Oh, Yogi Bear. Yeah, okay. yeah, the baseball player. Yeah. <laughs> same, same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's deja vu all over again. <laughs> deja poop. Okay, um, we're gonna be be reviewing Kolchak and okay. the series, and we're gonna be reviewing tonight the Ripper, Claudie. Should I find the picture? I've um, got, sure, I've got the slideshow come. I got oh, a slideshow. I didn't know you had one. Well, yeah, why yeah. don't you guys do yeah. that while I start tell me these this. things? Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna go take a pill real quick. I'll be right yeah, you go I'll ahead, honey. Pill, yeah. Take extra water. Um, I'm going to be reading from Night, uh, the Night Stalker Companion by Mark Dewidziak. Dewid Dewid and this is brought to you by the uh, great Michael Beacom. And uh, further to this uh, copyright compliance, I, I shall just be uh, reading extemporaneously an excerpt uh, starting on page 122 uh, with all of the legal stuff out of the way. Let me read. Uh, this is the story behind one of the great mysteries of all time. At three in the morning on May 21st, a go-go dancer named Michelle has just finished what is really her last number at the Boom Boom Room in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She was stabbed to death by a mysterious figure in black. Three days later, again in Milwaukee, the shadowy figure pulls a sword out of his cane and makes Debbie Friedler his next victim. A third victim, Laura Moresco, is found with her throat cut on a Chicago street corner. With the killer in the Windy City, independent news service editor Tony 
Vincenzo assigns yeah, Vincenzo. The, yep, yep, yep. It's Vincenzo. Okay. Uh, ass- we're, we're switching to, there are many languages in play here. Uh, Tony Vincenzo, obviously Italian, assigns the story to Ron Updike. <laughs> Updike. I just absolutely Updike, love yeah. that he calls him Updike. <laughs> Veteran crime reporter Car- Carl Kolchak wants the story, but he's too busy to fill in. He's too busy filling in for Miss Emily Fenwick who writes the advice column. Far from please, Kolchak gives terse, uh, cynical answers to letters asking Miss Emily for help. Still, while the nerdy Ron may have a superior attitude, he is also he also has a squeamish stomach. It was horrible, Ron laments to Tony. May I go home? So Kolchak is able to connive his way onto the story. Kolchak sees the suspect jump from a four-story building. He not only survives, he mops up the Chicago streets with uh, the police force. One picture of the murderer shows a rope burn around his neck like a hangman's rope. Researching a series of ripper murders, Kolchak finds that the authorities tried to hang one ripper in Germany. Kolchak's friend, reporter Jane Plum, has a letter sent to her newspaper by the Ripper, but the police won't let it be printed. Although she knows that Kolchak would double-cross his own fairy godmother for the story, Jane tells him that the letter had a rhyme. And now a pretty girl will die so Jack can have his kidney pie, end quote. The murderer Mm. cut out Laura Moresco's kidney, a trick pulled by the original Jack uh, the Ripper. After killing a fourth victim, the suspect is hit by a car, yet get, he gets up and walks away. Pulling the pieces together, Kolchak is convinced that this Ripper is Jack the Ripper, a fiend responsible for the murders of 70 women in 80 years, including the unsolved Whitechapel killings of five prostitutes in 1818. That would make him older than your suit, Jane tells him. And that's saying a lot. I mean, come on, we like we like Kolchak's suits. Each time the Ripper appears throughout history, his pattern is to claim five victims. Kolchak is determined to stop him before the fifth victim. Electricity is the only thing that seems to stop the killer, so Kolchak sets an electrical trap near an old house where the Ripper is hiding. Inside the Ripper's lair, Kolchak finds, to his horror, the Ripper. To his greater horror, he finds Jane's body. Running for his life, Kolchak lures lures the killer onto the electrical trap. It works, but the sparks set off a fire that destroys the house and all of the evidence. How could you explain it? Kolchak wonders. How could you explain it? With a laugh, he tosses off the third and final question. Who'd believe it? And that is an an excerpt uh, brought to you by Michael Beacom, written by Mark uh, Dawidziak, uh, from his book, The Night Stalker Companion. And you can nice. pick that up. Uh, it was originally published in 1997. And Michael Beacom is telling me that uh, in America, it is currently going for $149 oh, used wow. on Amazon. So in Canada, um, uh, Max Redstone will uh, assure you that it will be $1 million. And uh, wow. Shalom, Ezra Goldstein. Shalom. Ezra, Shalom. Good to see you. Hello, Thank hello. you for being here. Hello, so that was in. that was absolutely marvelous. And I have to hit mute because I'm gonna sneeze. Thank you so much, Michael Beacom. Good stuff. Yep. Yes, indeed. Uh uh hey, Elber. Yeah, I saw that the passing of that lady who was on a couple of episodes of Trek. Yeah. And Barbara Rush. Yeah. Oh, Barbara Rush passed away. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, but, 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 yeah. Um, what happened? Oh, Kyle had to mute for a second, so I guess we're waiting okay. for it too. Sorry, um, I was sneezing. I'm here. We, one I'm thing here. we did. I'm here. One, one thing we forgot, though. What, honey? What did we forget? <laughs> oh, the whistle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that, that opening the... theme. So good. I mean, it's mm-hmm. so good. Well, that's Perfect. that's ingrained in my memory as one of my most terrifying things from yeah. childhood. Whenever I walked, heard that whistle, I would run. Yeah, it's <laughs> like he walked in. It's, it's so it's like a, it's just him walking in there. I love that opening. 
and then the, the music kind of takes over and it's kind of pleasant at first. And then it goes, boom, 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 boom. Then the episode, he actually whistles it in this one. <laughs> so uh, who's talking about it first? Number one, Ken. I think was she you were still going number one or uh... um no that's that's the end of the synopsis and I just well, no, but I mean, did you want to talk about that I thought that that was really um great it was really um, good yeah I, yeah, I don't have you... very many notes on this episode I just okay. want to say um uh oh yes I th that I was amused by the fact that he had to write for Miss Emily um I thought it was yes. quite cute um yeah. it made me laugh. Uh, the uptight instead of updike was yes. hysterical. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed this whole thing. Um, this is the kind of TV that I grew up watching. I, this is vaguely familiar to me. So um, what's scary is, is that I probably I probably watched this when I was young. I just don't remember yeah. it because I wasn't much of a TV person. And I grew up very poor, like impecunious childhood, like penniless. And so um, it's not like we had cable and access to things, but um, so I'm not sure, but I just, I, I just love this. Um, this is Gothic horror at its finest. I know that this is also detective crime and I know it's got some thriller in there, but I mean, just, just the Gothic horror elements are just there. I just love it. I mean, the whole Jack the Ripper and the whole, the whole uh, epistemological exchange. Now it's sort of like a captain's log where before it was like, you know, he's writing these letters or he he's let, writing them to people. And then it becomes more like a journal. And I just, I love this show and I find it really enjoyable. I it's it's a great way to spend your time. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, Master of TDS, thank you. Good, uh, good hey! to see you there. I nice mean, welcome. And, and John Platt, Here welcome. Yep. Good, good evening, to see John. You, my friends. Um, Michael Beam says the uh, about the Coltrack theme, the composer uh, Gil Mealy's or Mealy's uh, was given 20 minutes to come up with it, so he reused a theme. He originally wrote for the Quester tapes. Yes. Wow. Good to know. I love the Quester tapes. Well, we're gonna okay, review I love that the one Quester night. tapes, and I did not know that. I did we'll not know that. that one night. I think it sounds, it rings a bell, because I remember thinking it sounded similar, because um, I saw this problem before I saw the Quester tapes, if I remember right. But again, I did see the Quester tapes a few years after it aired. So if you have the Kino Lorber Blu-ray, Mark uh, uh, Dwizziak, did the commentary track for the episode? Oh, cool! For this episode, um, I gotta buy that. I don't have it. I gotta buy it. Yep. What the Blu-ray? I need to get the Blu-ray. Yeah, I've been wanting yeah, to I get that. I don't have the Blu-ray. Yep, yep. Ah, master of the TDS, you are such a sweetheart. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Good. Yes, says, thank you. Ma I just thank wanted you. to stop in, say hi, and remind people to smash the like button. <laughs> it's thank good you. to see you. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, thank you for stopping um, in. I always Mark. enjoy your stuff on Twitter. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Mark, what did you think of the episode? Oh, I liked it. I didn't think it was uh, as good as the movies, but it, it, you know, this is perfect for a TV show. It is. I'm kind of glad they went with uh, went with this. You can see why this is the uh, uh, you know X Files uh, uh, the reason behind why the X uh, Chris Carter did the X Files the inspiration. Oh, really? I didn't for. know that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. said it. Oh well, that totally makes sense because this yeah. is yeah yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, the X Files is more strange tales, right? Well, yeah, but it was uh, it was it had conspiracy, it had, you know, alien stuff, but it had a lot of uh, you know, monster of the stuff, week, monster type stuff as well. They yeah, did, they so kind of and those are my science friends. fiction, and it's not science fantasy. It's more like what what they used to call weird tales or strange tales. It's that mixture. Yeah, it had right? science fiction in it. Some though, of yes. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Horror. Yeah. Horror. yeah. Okay, yeah. well then maybe I'll like the X Files. Maybe I should watch it. Well, there's certain episodes that we'd have to tell ones. you not, never, not to watch and never oh to watch. Oh my God, there's some episodes you don't need to watch. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm never yes. in the, I have a lot of friends who love it. I'm never in the biggest fan of it, but I, I have a friend of mine who was trying to get me into it, and I was mad yeah. at it. And I remember, for silly reasons, because it replaced uh, Briscoe, and I was mad that Briscoe got canceled. So I probably yeah. I vowed I would never watch it. I was mad at Fox, yeah. and a buddy of mine a few years later was telling me he's fan, a big fan of it, and he would try to get me to watch X Files, yeah. and so. So he was sneaky. He said, I think certain, at least watch a, certain, a couple episodes. So he showed me a few here and there yeah. that I handpicked episodes. And I thought, yeah, they <laughs> were really you. good. So I never <laughs> went back you. and watched it all. It was never, But I do think it, there were some great episodes. And I understand yeah. now anyone would be a big fan, I got fan of the earlier seasons. 
but what um i really love the monster of the week episodes in the x-files and uh with my better half that was one of our friday night things watching the x-files and the funny thing is when we moved into our house oh god it's 24 years ago now uh we didn't have any curtains up nothing was going on we we're just watching the x-files but our neighbors have like a very high window so they have privacy but they looked in the window and they're like oh we saw you guys watching the x-files on friday night not that we're snooping <laughs> but we, we knew that you would be cool because you're watching the watching the x-files so uh but x-files has some fantastic the alien stuff got too much for me after a while this is why i love this night stalker uh you know the monster of the week and those are my favorite ones in the mm-hmm. x-files i thought they overdid the conspiracy stuff to you know to death mm. beat it to death but okay this, so it's uh, got a it's got a conspiracy it's some of that it's aliens because okay. well, molders yeah conspiracy guy, but uh yeah th- that's, that's, that's definitely that worth watching saying right i want to believe or whatever they got yeah, the skeptic the truth mm-hmm. is out there she's a skeptic I oh love the, the truth Jared. is out there yeah the, or yes that's what it is ezra goldstein yeah, yeah. yeah sweetheart um that's why when i came to the internet i and ever, people started asking me stuff in podcasting that's why i was so um adamant to make sure that they understood that i'm a nerd not a geek you know um i i don't have geek knowledge and i've never been into watching tv i've always been into like books but never te- television or films and i could never even hope to have um the knowledge of comic books and merchandise and and the and the knowledge of film and and television like geeks do i mean the, the geeks are a modern miracle the things they know but yeah i just i've never watched television and i've i've had to really like work a lot of hours and i've worked a lot in my life um i used to work you know 12 14 sometimes even 16 hours a day um without days off and that went on for me- many 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 years so not only was i working but um if I did have time to to catch something on TV, uh, it was definitely Star Trek, <laughs> and that's about it. So, I, I unfortunately i i never I never grew up in an environment where where I could watch television and and I could watch a lot of films, Ezra. Michael Beacom and I have some trivia for us. Uh, this is a more Kolchak trivia. Originally, they. Wanted to use Jack the Ripper for the second TV movie, but they were limited in deference to Robert Block, who wrote yours truly, Jack the Ripper. So, are we... Um, well, I was just going to... got a couple more things to say, I guess. So, okay, but, uh, go for it. Not not much, though, but uh, yeah, so I just... You know, the it's more of the same, but it's all, it's so good. I mean, it's just, uh, it's well done. And I, I didn't think there was as much yelling in this episode between Vincento and cold check i mean so, it was it was yeah. a better it was a better more like the aggravated boss versus like the high decibel screaming they had in the last uh, the night strangle mo- movie yeah so but like, in the night strangler in their defense the the editor guy he knew they were getting fired and what's worse is he was going to take his side so they were both getting fired yeah but just for me it got a little gave me a little bit of a headache at, at one point but that, not saying it wasn't uh, wasn't it's really good. It's because you're a Cub Scout light leader. You just guess, want yeah. everyone to get along. We yeah, can all hold along. hands and sing Kumbaya if you want. Yes, you must. Yeah, and then Kumbaya, and then put a stake, Lord. and then put a stake through the vampire's heart. And then stake Kumbaya. the vampire. <laughs> yeah, and the one thing I was going to clip in this episode where the girl has, I think they call the girl fat. Culture calls the woman reporter fat, and then the the line where she's it's eating. True. She wants a tongue sandwich. I, I got to clip that for Nick. And yeah. if I have time, I'll t- but it was just where she names all the stuff that she wants to eat. I'm like, that's the lady for Nick, right? It's she, not what she wants to eat. She, she, she was actually so hungry. orders all that food, yeah. Mark. She's going to yeah, eat no, all of a, it. Yeah, I'll have a triple, I'll have a tongue sandwich, triple decker, side of fries, macaroni salad, root beer float, two scoops, and a piece of pecan pie. That's right. <laughs> two scoops of ice cream. Um, so and God I would just like her. to say that at this time, that would that is what it was like. Like most people were were super thin, and that's just the way society was at that point. So you know, that's just yeah. I hope that won't upset people because that's the way it was. And it's also okay if Kolchak um, likes to just be with showgirls. Yeah, he does seem yeah. to run into the showgirls yeah. a lot. He's allowed. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he yeah. yeah so he's like, what she look like? Fat. 
Well, so, fat, sort of fat. It's like, oh God, cold check. But yeah, it's, I was laughing when you know I'm not, uh, you know, not, I'm dimensionally challenged myself too. But uh, uh, that, that was a nice comedic. There's always a good comedic aspect to cold check too, which I really, uh, really like. So the the case maybe is not, uh, you know, it's not too original. We've had that Jack the Ripper, you know, again and again, over and over. Uh, I did like the scenes of the way they're filmed. You know, he's fighting all the cops and. The, the only thing that gets them is electricity. So I did like the solution. The end was an intelligent, you know, solution to take, uh, take the ripper out and God, Kolchak has some guts. And I, I love the scene in the, uh, in the apartment when, uh, or, or the house, excuse me. And I guess the ripper had, did he have that front porch rig? So you would fall through, uh, fall through that, uh, um, yeah, was Forged it that there? or did was he just notice that so. the wood was rotten? And that just somebody noticed had... it. Yeah. Yeah. Just by the, by the way, the thing about that, Michael Bacon, is for back then, I don't know how old the Wadziak is back then, you know, it was just a different time. That was considered, you know, if not the word fat, then chunky. I mean, you know, it's just not like today. Yeah. She would be considered, I mean, she wouldn't be, in, comparatively speaking, today, nothing really, but yeah. It, no, it's but that's true. Yeah, they... it, it's true. I mean, it, and that's and that's the fact. I mean, if you look back um, on shows, even like even something relatively new, like Stand by Me, um, that right. Chonk so... was Chonk. <laughs> chonk, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that was considered morbidly obese. Uh, there wasn't really mm. much room for it. But I mean, that's the socio-historical context, right? And so we can't pull that out of its time and and use presentism to to scold it because it is what it is, right? And unfortunately, North Americans, people who live in 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 uh, you know developed countries, where people are getting fat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's but it's important for us to be honest about that. It, it's not mean to say. Sometimes we just have to to face the facts, and and we have to try and and take care of ourselves. Do I think it's appropriate to be mean? No, it's not. But um, I, I don't think Kolchak goes too far here. I think that he, no, he just... finds. I think he finds this young lady. Um, he likes emotionally her. and intellectually stimulating, but he won't go there because he's more of a I want to sleep with showgirls type. And 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 that's expressed in the dialogue. And it's okay with me. Yeah, he says uh mm -hmm. we have mutual respect, mutual trust. Yeah. And she's I don't trust you, Kolchak. You double cross your own fairy godmother for a story. Yep. Mm -hmm. Why but Jane? Okay. How but it's okay that, that, that yeah. people have their own preferences for what they like and what they're sexually and emotionally and physically attracted to. That's that's perfectly Bigots. okay. Bigots. We can't right, live so too <laughs> much in, in a time where we're telling other people what they're allowed to like and so i'm not i'm not a huge fan of that i don't think that people should be should be cruel to other people no no yeah but um but at the same time i also don't think that the alternative is to swing in the other nutty direction by saying that yeah anyway and i oh i did love the interaction with kolchek and the police chief here so uh, I'm, always you know, gonna, they always love yeah, it so it's a great character and uh yeah this is a fun, uh, good episode i'd give it uh if we're doing I don't know if we're doing the A, you know, the A ratings. I give this uh, a B plus. I thought it was a good start to the show. What about but... you, number one. Um, for me, uh, this is an A. Um, I I think this is as good as it gets. I wish that we had TV like this again. Um, you guys know that I love weird tales. I love gothic horror. I like I like the the fantasy mixed in with the science fiction and mixed in with the weird tales. I really like that sort of thing. Um, it's like, you know, like the outer limits or the twilight zone where one week it's more this or, or it's more that. And, and I, I just like this kind of storytelling. And I also like this kind of, of fear. Gothic horror, um, sets up the whole mood and the whole atmosphere of, of, you know, of being incredibly frightened by, by something supernatural or, or, or confronted by something that's evil. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't include gore and then yep. good wins over evil instantly. And so I really like that payoff. Um, I like that setup and I like that payoff. I find it incredibly um, enjoyable. Ask me how many times I've read Bram Stoker's Dracula. Ask me how okay, many how times many I've times? read um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the modern Prometheus. Okay, how I many mean, times? Oh, 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 oh. You told me to ask you. 
many, many, oh, many times. Do you remember that time when we were I, on wait air? Wait to so- see what I purchased today, mm-hmm. speaking of that. Uh, you did oh, what did that. you get? What did you get? Well, I'm going to well, show me, that in the enabling well, at the I'm very gonna, end I'm, of the show. Um, okay. Yeah, I want to talk about the episode when I get a chance. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Mark, don't switch to enabling on Clobby. No, I'm not. That's why I said I'm going to show man. after. But yeah, geez, Mark. Wow. Damn it, Mark. <laughs> yeah, all right. So um, I don't know what I think anymore. I guess it's over. No, I can't remember. No, uh, <laughs> <That's good. laughs> this was, one of the problems this episode suffers from is that it's almost like in some ways a remake of the first two. The second one was very familiar to the first one. And this one's a lot like the. they're all. It's repetitive of the first two of them in structure and some of the thing, the events. I mean, it's got a lot of the same beats, all that kind of stuff. But it's the first episode. I'm having seen the show before. You know, we'll have. I, I think it's kind of why Darren McGavin, after the show, you know, had been around over the year, he kind of thought that really there was no point in doing any more of them. There's only so many times can you do the same thing over and over again. That said, they, you know, they, they, um, you know, all the stuff that happened in this one happened in the first two, but it's still well done. He's just Darren McGavin's always terrific, always <clears throat> extremely entertaining. Now, of course, they're set up in Chicago, so they have a series. They can't move to a new city every week, so they had to find a way to find them grounded with the INS in Chicago. Uh, Vincenzo, you know, you get Simon Oth- Oakland is always fun and terrific to watch, so he's really good. I guess they found a place where they can stay and, you know, bite each other's heads off all the time, but like you said, they town to town a little bit. You know, uh, because remember, Francisco let him burn it the first, and then the first up, the first movie, this one, into the second one, he ends up having to go with him. And they find they were going to the New York, but all of a sudden, they're you know, at the end of that, they said they were going to New York, but they didn't make it. Now they're in Chicago. And uh, it was just, a, it was a fine episode. It had a lot of the same beats, yes, but it also uh, mostly had its own identity. Uh, Kolchak is fearless, Kolchak is fun, and Kind of sad what happens to Etta Candy in this episode. The girl, the lady, the lady in this, she played Etta Candy on Wonder Woman. Remember? Oh, yeah. And um, so anyway, I believe that's the same lady. So, uh, but overall, a good one. I would give this one definitely a B, you know, B plus actually. That's B fair. plus. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. More of the same, but good, but but well done. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also too that. Um, if you didn't get a, a chance to see the ABC movie, like Friday night or Saturday night movie, I forget when this was on and, and which channel it was on. But if you didn't have a chance to 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 imbibe those two offerings, I think that The Ripper is a good start to introduce someone to the series that and, and the episodes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's a great yeah. setup. It doesn't take you. You don't have you don't have to have watched the other two episodes. Uh, to enjoy this one and uh and i agree with you i was thinking that as watching like they cut away during the gruesome stuff you know it's going to be gruesome and it's just as scary right it doesn't uh because your mind fills in the blanks that's why gothic horror works and that's why gothic horror um enhances the uh, fantasy and 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 science fiction and weird tales but yeah it is important to emphasize that we do see some repetition here, but it, it's also incredibly important to point out that no one had a VHS, no one had a beta, no one was recording anything. Many places, like especially where I live, didn't even have cable um, television. So if you missed Saturday night at the movies or if you missed you know, Friday night at the movies, you know, um, the month before, because, you know, you were working or you just didn't have a chance or whatever, you would not know anything about this show. So if you're going to make a series, that Ripper, that first Ripper one has to sort of set up the the premise yeah. and, and the storytelling device that becomes familiar for Kolchak. So um, yeah, it, it's important to remind people of that because when, when I was growing up, there was no remote control. Um, there was just a lot of argument. There was remote control. It was Who the was going to get up and go and change the channel? And <laughs> um, there was no VHS. There was no beta. That didn't happen until like a long after that. And if you're poor, you were renting it from the local Red Rooster or the local, um, you know, mom and pop movie, whatever. <laughs> you know, so the, it's just, yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to make that point um, to put the show in and it's set up in socio-historical context. So I, I, I think everyone knows what's coming, right? You can have that. 
of Dracula. You're going to have that Frankenstein. You're going to have that Jack the Ripper. You're probably going to have um, the, um, oh, I have string Wolf brain. Um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, you know, maybe you're going to have like a witch story. It's all coming. and It's all going to be fun. <laughs> Yeah, I think too, I think that scene in the closet where uh, Kolchak is hiding, my God, that was terrifying. Curtains, he, he's in the he, curtains. Cur yeah, he's behind the and that that when the Ripper's yeah. putting the clothes up, that was a fantastic scene. And of course, then he tragically flaunt, as you said, uh, Clabber. times he finds uh, Jane Plum, who we kind of was teasing a little bit about her dem being dimensionally challenged, but he still cared about her. Didn't matter. He was just uh, mm -hmm. making Such a, a fun quip. To, yeah, yeah, and then, uh, and he was telling her, "Don't go, don't get but involved." She was big, and, yeah, she was foolish. Yeah. Yeah, well, she said, I can't get it. You know, these it's not really the Jack the Ripper. These are just Looney Tunes. Uh, but even the cops got killed or uh, mm -hmm. got hurt on that one in the first mm -hmm. in the massage parlor when yeah. he, uh, he gets arrested. That was hysterical trying to, to yeah. hide there. That was a great setup. K Roberts. K Roberts. Hey, K Roberts. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was hysterical when he went to like the happy ending place. That was yeah, fun. that was fun. So there's some great. Uh, great scenes in this and he just owns this uh, owns this role and thankfully i'm not as scared watching it now that i've aged quite a bit but uh, <laughs> it was the, also the a tension different time right well like the yeah, amount no, of the violence we're exposed good. to is different now right don't forget yeah, that yeah. mark it's not just you it's also the amount of violence you and i have, and clobby and all of us have been exposed to because they've been dialing up the the violence more and more and more as the years have rolled on for sure yeah yeah it's just uh, yeah because actually when the uh the characters are they see the dead characters and if anyone has watched bones or you know relative to quincy or you know some of these uh you know shows in the cop shows they show like the body's all dismembered now on the screen yeah. and they would never show that back then so they kind of pan over and uh, what was the, the actor's name the uh you know the guy that uh, is on the case uh i'm forgetting his name now the uh Guy, they kept making fun Updike. of it. Was oh, Uptight, Uptight, up up yeah, Uptight. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, he's like, I've got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, so he, hey, he can't Rewild, handle. Rewild Nation, Rewild, Real Wade Nation. Yes. Hey Wade. But, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, so that that was so well done, like you said. Good night, Professor like, R two. By the way. So. Good night, Professor R two. R two. Um, Mark, I love that you always bring stuff like this. Like you bring it up. I love that you do because. Yeah, it's just an interesting, it's a super interesting topic to 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 table because uh, um, we were young in the 1970s. Yep. Um, but at the same time, society has changed so much. So the combination of the two, yeah, it's just, this is a whole, isn't it amazing how we have been conditioned to accept more and more and more violence? Uh yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and it doesn't necessarily even make it have more of an impact, right? It actually takes more skill to make something scary and tension without showing the gore and the guts and the doesn't mean you can't that you can't ever show that, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh especially when you've got to work in the parameters of TV and Fiona's saying, yeah, how she says she can't emphasize how good the writing is here. Yeah, and many other 70s shows. Yeah, they had more time, first of all, for the episodes. Now the they're gonna cram so many commercials. And I think what's the show now? Mm -hmm. 40 minutes or 42 minutes versus mm -hmm. 52 minutes. So even the writers are complaining about trying to tell a story and the time and acts that they have. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And it's also meeting expectations. And and I think that when you have teams of writers, that happens. I, I think it's unavoidable because they're all they're all adding in their ideas. And and if it's just one author and then it's turned into a teleplay, uh, I think it that it just it there's more cohesion. That it's just a better storytelling apparatus. And certainly, yeah, walking into a story wanting to tell the story instead of trying to please a, a certain demographic that the corporation wants, I think. I think what this what this kind of storytelling does is it exposes the fraud that is um, um, intellectual property in the corporate sphere, and and this idea that that you know corporations control storytelling and that corporations control culture. I think that 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 was just a huge mistake that we made in society. Um, well, good night, Brogu. Brogu's head down. Oh, good to see oh, you. Oh, good night, everybody. sweetheart. Mwah, mwah, mwah. 
Um, Real Wave Nation says, hey, Clavi, can you answer me tomorrow? I can yeah. answer you right now, possibly, but what's your question? Let me go see if I can find something. Yeah, what's the question? Yeah, I got to know what? now. Let me go look. Well, was there a question? Let me go look. I'm looking. We said, Mark, Mark and Clavi are awesome. Thank you. Very kind of you. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's yep. the only other thing he wrote. I don't hear that that often, so I yeah. could use that. Yep. <laughs> oh, you sent me a DM. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I I, I don't uh, look. I haven't been looking at my DMs, uh, Real Way Nation. So let me see if I can. Well, I, I see. Okay. I see what you said. Um, blah, blah, blah. Monday, 8 p.m. You're at eight, Monday, 8 p.m. Central. Panel with hopeful joiners of the command. Uh, okay. I see. Um, usually, if it's eight PM Central, I'm about, I'm um, doing um, I do my show with Jay, uh, uh, my show. I'm doing two shows Monday night. Hey, Lemon Pie, good to see you. That's okay. You didn't derail. It's fine. I pre I'm, I'm glad you. I would have answered you when I got done, but uh, um, well, I don't know. It depends. I'm doing shows two shows that night, so I'll be in the midst of uh, finishing up around the time you start with the first one, which is my uh, Earth B show with with J man. And then after that, I got to do my own show, but uh, depending on what you guys are doing, if I'm able to get done in time, I'm, I'll, I'll try to stop by. I'd be, I'd be honored to be there. I'm honored by the, by the invite. Thank you very much. And if I get done in time, I'll stop in there for, I'll only have a few minutes, unfortunately, because I'll be like, it'll be, you know, between uh, the two shows, I'll get done around eight ish. Sometimes a little after eight for the first one. And then, Go right to at nine central to my show. Uh, yes, Ezra Goldstein, uh, definitely rest in peace, Joe Flaherty, the great Joe Flaherty. He was great, so yeah. Um, let's see. In the commentary, the Wedzi the Act thought the calling the actress fat was a bit nice. Okay, we saw that. Okay, so we have Fiona's review of this episode. All Are right, ready? ready? Let's see. Yeah. Fiona says, um, this was a perfect intro to transition from TV movie to pilot episode. The villain had enough gravitas to keep it interesting. And speaking of, this was an excellent intro to the recurring um, to the recurring characters. He agreed. The dialogue was very natural and was, as was the acting, the combination of thriller, humor, and historical accuracy made the scary parts all the more frightening. The screw uh let's see what oh sorry the score of is the cherry on the top. Yeah it is well well scored. It's very good really good. Chicago is a character in this show. You always get a fantastic on the ground view of the city. One of the best pilots of one of the best shows on TV. Get used to the evidence being gone at the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Kind of like running me the Incredible Hulk a little bit. You know, the evidence is always gone. Jack McGee never had, he never has the evidence, right? The time scales. What's up? Yep, exactly. All the, oh, all you people are still awake. <laughs> Good to see you. Yes, we are. So I guess that says enough that we're done. We did that. And, uh, hmm. You see how long it takes to do all this? It would be tough to review the Trek comic anyway. But uh, yeah, well, I can do a, a very quick enabling. I have uh, short enabling, and uh, all right. Let me uh, let me if call. What is Gabe? Up. Yeah, it's only take take five minutes. Are, I am. Gonna, I am. Are you going to enable? You will. You will like this. You will like this. Are you going to enable and, and her? I hope so. I hope to enable everyone. Uh oh. But and all and, right, everyone. And, enabling warning. It's a warning. Yeah, warning. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I got sent this uh, quote. Well, I'll, I'll load this up. Well, uh, from uh, Max Redstone. So, uh, and I check just check my Twitter. Sometimes I forget to do that. But remember this line. What movie was this? Wasn't this in one of the movies? Or uh, yeah, that's from Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide, right? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yep, yep. Tarantino wrote the script, but I think Tony Scott directed the movie, if I remember right. Classic line. Yeah, I got a clip. I got to clip that for you. Yeah, there's a great scene it. in there where um, he has he's the he's the first officer of the sub, and he has to break up an argument between two of his uh two of his um sailors. They're having a fight. He's, what are you fighting? Because 
you know, they have a fight over who's better, who's Silver Surfer is better, Kirby's or Mobius's. And they have the big <laughs> fight. And he's like telling me, yeah, you bunch of punks. I guess he reads in the right act, and, you know, fighting over something stupid like that. And he says, besides, everybody that reads comic books knows that Kirby Silver Surfer is the only true Silver Surfer. <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's very yeah, cool stuff. The great Denzel Washington, uh, voiced by uh, Mr. Uh, Quentin Tarantino, wrote that. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah, a good yeah. movie. I gotta go go but find go get grab that and um, I'll put that line so you can have that line to play. Yeah, that'd be anyway. great. That'd be a great clip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to have that <laughs> have that going. And thank you. No, uh, no one saw the Mobius that. now. I like you know, I love Mobius, but yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find the last uh let's see, where was it? Well, it was Vice Press here. Let me grab that and I'm gonna show this. Give me two wags of a dog's tail, as Raquel always likes to uh say. Let me uh, grab that. Let me show. So I'll put the link in. So this, uh, the link for these uh, posters, I'm going to show in one second, is uh, Vice Press. And uh, are you going to make me poor? I, I could. Mm -hmm. I hope. I hope not. Uh, but Baba uh, Doom. <laughs> hey, Baba Doom's here. Baba Doom. <laughs> and lemon pie. I didn't get to say mm -hmm. hi. Lemon pie. Yep, so let me, here we go. Let me uh, present this. Oh, let me find this one more. Sorry about, sorry. This yes, he did. Here. He wrote, he, he, Quentin Tarantino wrote the script for Crimson Tide. Joe Dog. I think I said Joe Dog. Oh, I'm ready. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. Joe Dog. Just... Big announcement today. What? Oh, just yeah. X is doing a massive purge. Oh. Rob Altus is here. Rob. Rob, hey, Rob. Altus. He said Mark enabled me. Uh oh. What do he do? <laughs> it's always enabling. After what <laughs> you did to us with the prisoner stuff and the fact that I didn't yeah. get a rover, you, you were Rob. You were an enabler as well, and we love you for yeah. it. Well, he helped me. I considered it helping me. Was, um... Oh, what? Oh wow! Is this Ortiz? Uh, let's see who's the artist on this. I purchased the foil variant. Okay. And this, I purchased two posters. The, the shipping the shipping is nineteen dollars from the UK. Yeah. Which ain't bad. You know, fifteen bucks to ship one poster. You know, or you know, fifteen, nineteen, so twenty bucks. So yeah. Not bad. Um, but then I ordered great. another poster because then it's a side I doubled it up. I was like, well, if I get two posters, it's the same shipping. So it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. splitting the, the shipping. So this is a 36. Is that Ortiz? By 20, it's not Ortiz. It's Who by is it? artist Lyndon Willoughby. Oh, I've never Cel heard of this person. Celebrate one of the most influential TV shows of all time with this incredible 60 styled space age Star Trek print. Presented as a dazzling foil variant. Each lithograph print is hand numbered from a limited edition of only 160 pieces wow. and primed to join your fleet of sci fi art and Star Trek collectibles. Boldly go where no man has gone before, thanks to Mark's enabling, and bring home the Star Trek the Original Series foil variant art print by Lyndon Willoughby today. Nice. So I purchased this today. Uh, wow. I got the foil variant, which was only $10. What was it? This is $70. And Don't dog six, It was actually. No, I'm not, but it was uh, it was cheaper when I I thought when I ordered it when they sent me the link. Oh, this is Edge. through Sideshow. It's a little bit more expensive on Sideshow. Edge of Time. Hey there. Edge of Time. Yep. Well, so, I yeah. never. <laughs> so it's well, also that... available. In... So what do you do? You think I should have bought that, or was that a bad purchase? No, I think it's beautiful. It's well, too rich for my blood, though. But that's that's gorgeous. How much was that? Second? Sixty dollars um, mm. from Sideshow, and the foil variant is seventy dollars. No, well, maybe if I had ordered from Sideshow, the the um, shipping would have been cheaper. But I should have checked that. It's okay. And then um, whatever. I'm just happy that you press. bought it. It's only yeah. five yeah. dollars here. I, there, so I bought three of the. Yeah, I bought three of these, and I used my fantasy football winnings on it, so I figured that was... <laughs> <laughs> so, Just uh, in case your wife is listening. Yeah, if Maureen yeah. is listening, yeah. So, no, she's going to want my winnings. What are you gonna have <laughs> I got to split them with my... Are you going to have to buy a wall to... Yeah, I might have to put, put this up at work. I'm gonna put have to, on, maybe, ah. maybe I'll open up a comic book shop and, then, and I'll put these on the walls. Yep, yep. <laughs> Michael Beacom sent you a thank gift, you Michael Beacom, thank you, Michael. He says... Uh, 
I'm loath to call it a night, but work starts early, so I have to force myself to to bed. Great stream till later. Be seeing you. Be seeing you, Michael. Thank you so much for that kind gift. And uh, let's give him something uh, before he gets out of here. Yeah. Michael, let's see here. I know he would love to see Turk arguing with somebody. There we go. You're a dumbass. Well, a double dumbass on you. There's only one thing I want to say to you. You're a dumbass. Captain, I see no reason to stand here and be insulted. Get those nerds! 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 What? Brain and brain, what is brain? Cass, super Cass. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for your yes. generosity of spirit and time tonight by um, sending us the image of the synopsis for um, the Kolchak uh, series. I really appreciate it. Would you please tell Cassandra that I said hello? Uh, and it's yes. just, you are always a delightful person to hang out with. You're just so intelligent and so fun and just a great conversationalist. So sleep sweet and uh, send Cassandra our best. Good night, my friend. Good night. Yes, indeed. So I purchased one of the, so good oh, night, wow. everyone. Yep. I purchased, which guess which one I purchased just for fun. I want go, all four. I'm going to go with the one all the way to the uh, far right there, the original Frankenstein film, Boris Korloff. You win the prize. Yeah. I, I've been eyeing this poster for a while and I'm like out of all. It's beautiful. And I use my, you know, like I got to double up for the shipping. I'm like, this is just too well done not to buy this poster. So there's only 200 of them. And I'm, in addition to collecting toys, I have a massive poster collection that are all in boxes mm. for the most part, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, uh, not not on the walls enjoying them. But I was joking. If I opened up a comic book shop, then I'd have to put, all, put them up on the walls there. A comic book shop? No, sweetheart. You need a museum. <laughs> a museum. Well, that, yeah, they could go up in the museum. But this... I think this poster is amazing. I think it is. Uh, it is beautiful. beautiful. Edge of time. You are the funniest, coolest person. The Raspberry Avenger. <laughs> Fly amongst us. Yeah. I love that. I love that movie. I, I think, look, I've always thought Bride of Frankenstein was a little bit better than the first one, but still, that's a great one. I mean, and that's, that's a better poster. Yeah. So this poster is by, so it's 224 by 36, hand numbered, fine art, lithograph print. Put it on GF Smith 300 gram accent paper. The paper is gorgeous on these. So I've gotten two Wrath of Khan posters from Vice Press, and uh, I mean it's just amazing how how good the quality and it's it's still available. So uh, uh, it's been out for a while. I can't believe it hasn't sold out. I mean, it, 52 bucks. It's it's expensive for a poster, but if you got had one of these in hand, I mean it's it's solid. I mean it's just. Uh, it's like it's almost printed on cardboard. It's that thick. Yeah, and, the, and card, the card stock, the paper. It's almost like still... card stock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I wonder what the weight is. I bet you the weight is just ridiculous. Well, here's the weight: three hundred. Uh, Holy GSM. moly! So it's very high. Oh, it's wow! Yeah. So it's a very expensive to print on that because I do printing for my day job sometimes, and uh, you know they charge you a lot of money to print on that. Plus, the the paper is expensive too these days. Yeah, but I just it's love also this. the fact that 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 type of paper, like it's going to absorb color. It's going to be really pretty, right? It's going yeah. to be really nice. So I did open up one of the uh, Wrath of Khan posters that I got. It was gorgeous. I haven't even opened up the other one. It's just in the canister. But uh, you got to be careful you don't crease it because it's so damn thick when you take it out. So someday I'll have that uh, have these framed. But then I love this, you know, the man who made a monster. So, you know, they get it right, too. It's, it's not Franken Frankenstein. So, but these other Universal Monster, po I mean, this Dracula one, I, that's amazing too. I love that. That's so good. And uh, of course, uh, Bride of Frankenstein, which is an incredible movie. <laughs> it's only forty bucks. Yeah, too, but unfortunately, movie. these are in the U.S. or the, the U.K. See, that so one doesn't have the monster on it, so that's why I like the first poster. I mean, I like the bride, but yeah. Oh, because it doesn't have the it's just the bride. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, it's, have. It's the, cool, the but yeah, the other one. Yeah, that's, I love that movie. Yeah, but the first one has you know Karloff on it. And it's the monster. They should have had. Yeah, they should have had uh, the bra uh, the monster too. Yeah, but it's still an awesome poster. It doesn't even look yeah. like Elsa Lanchester. Yeah. And then this is uh, Whalen. 
the bride of Sphinx. That's a lie. She's a lie. What's a lie? Wow. Some, that's pretty cool, good. Too. I mean, some pretty people cool. love, pretty. some people don't like whale and some, you know, it's whatever floats your boat. But no, it's, good. it's nice, pretty nice. Good, well done. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's got that scary scene with the girl. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's a very cool poster, too. So, yeah, so the website's Vice Press, and um, also, um, what did I say had that? That was, uh, um, was Vice Press had it, and also Sideshow had the Star Trek poster. So maybe the shipping, the shipping might be cheaper if it's coming to the U.S. And the other thing that I saw today, this uh, is uh, Invisible Woman. Bishu statue. So this is a Japanese interpretation of the. Mm. Oh yeah. So the people that make those my, many many years back, my uh, my daughters, my daughter and her wife, they gave me the Power Girl one like that for Christmas, for Christmas, whatever it was. I still have it. Oh, you still have it? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. That's so beautiful. this looks pretty. This looks pretty cool. So it's ain't cheap, but two hundred thirty bucks. Face but... though, to be honest, I'd rather just look like an. I don't like that kind of art style. Well, that's their interpretation. Bod, though, yeah. I know it's yeah. it's the anime. It looks to look like a child. Yeah, that's the anime that's look. The anime too. style. I don't, I don't yeah. care much for it. It's, yeah, like you said, it does have that to it. Number one, but then the body sort of surely doesn't. So it's annoying. I mean, I just. I know. I understand. It's beautiful, beautiful. Other than that, I just don't care much for the face. When well, the know. Japanese still can make. Uh, they're not scared of all this PC stuff where you can't have no. something look for the video game controversy that's yeah. going around now. So, uh, no, I don't think that's Clobby's issue. Yeah, no, no, no I, I hear him, but I'm just saying, yeah, he just likes everyone to be legal. <laughs> no, no, but in general, <laughs> right. all the, the Japanese don't, there's a controversy they used the, um, uh, I think Princess Fiona was commenting on Twitter too. They used the model. Uh, for a video game that was quite curvaceous and they kept attacking the video game designers. They're basically telling them to yeah. go away now, you know. So this, they, they uh, where was the line in here? They uh, uh, they they transform the character, you know, the animator, and they go in this uh, in this style, you know, this Japanese style, this Japanese look of the, the character. I just thought it would be fun too. Yeah, they reimagine characters the, from the popular comic book games and movies from a Japanese perspective and transform them into unique busho. I can't say that correctly style statues, but uh, I have a um, like a Princess Leia in this style, and I do have a Sue Storm kind of in this style. But I just thought it was fun, something to show. So I'll put that in the yeah in the chat in the link. Ooh, that's a big long Bushu. link. I didn't say it. Yep. I'm resting brief, brief face. Rude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll put the link in a second. But uh, yeah, I thought that was uh, not necessarily going to buy that because I don't have that many smackerels lying around. But uh, that's a that's a lot of dineros. Is that yeah. what they called dineros? How much was it? Two hundred thirty dollars. Oh, Way no. too much money. Oliver mm, Belmonte yeah. has I mean, a say... group question. Yeah. So here's well, this the one. Link. What's he got here? Yeah, Raquel. What was your favorite one-liner? Uh, what was or what was your what were some of your favorite one-liners in sci-fi films? Mine is was it a Ripley line in Aliens? Get away from her, you bitch! And yeah. from the Robocop film, Dead or Alive, you are coming with me. Yeah, there are there are so many good ones. First of all, I want to say thank you to Oliver Belamonte for always giving the chat and the panel and everyone here something to talk about. You are just such a great conversation starter, and I just appreciate you oh. more than than I can say with words. So hey. thank you, my marvelous yeah. friend. Yeah, um, thank you. Hey, John Platt, it's been a pleasure to have you here. We've never seen you here before. It says, uh, it's been nice hanging out with the chat and talking comics and films, but it's after six a.m. here. Oh my goodness, in Northern Ireland, and I um, I need to get some sleep. Uh, You're well, Irish? Yeah. yes. My oh, goodness. Yes. Oh, Raquel really likes you now. Yeah. You yeah. like it before. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Get some sleep there, but it's great to have you still here. If you're still hearing this, it's been uh, great having you here. I hope you will revisit us. I know it's yes, a, fact, please do. a sleep, big time sleep. factor. Yeah. Um, it's a big time difference, but I, thank there you. There is, but I'm so glad that you're a Nighthawk. I mean, I mean, yeah. most of our population is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, That's yeah. what we're good for, sleep, right? What's that? Irish people are really good at, at at cooking. We have amazing food. We have amazing beer, amazing booze. We're amazing writers, and we're amazing academics. <laughs> and what else? Well, that's pretty much it. 
I don't know. Irish people are good at farming too. Anyway, um, Oliver Belmonte. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you. Like I said, second of all, I want to say, uh, get away from her. You bitch it. is, uh, that's a zinger. I love that one from aliens. Um, I also love the Robocop one. I mean, um, throughout my entire life, I have always loved, uh, I have had enough, enough. of you. Um, we have that clip. Yeah. That's a good one. I also love, uh, but for me, like if you ask me, ask me. I, I don't know. Settle up, lock and load is good too. But I really love a logic is the beginning of wisdom, not the end. Mm. Um, because that's that's the truth of life, right? Logic is where is where it is wisdom begins. It doesn't just stop there. Oh, you know, I'm logical. Anyway, um, so that's Vulcan lives. Hey. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I I really like that. That's undiscovered country. Um. Uh, you know. So it, hey. they're they're goodies. They're who's goodies. Here? What about you, Cobby? Uh, look who's here though. First, <gasps> uh, Nick. Uh, thank you for the super chat, buddy. Wiser. You're too kind. The great dirty chip flavors of Nick Weiser. If you have not yet, please uh go to his channel and subscribe. Nick, put your link in there. And, you know, get some. If we can't, just in case. The off chance we have anyone who hasn't subscribed to you yet. Good yeah. to see you, brother. Everyone better be subscribed to Nick Weiser. Yeah, you better, yeah, you better be. We love Otherwise, no, no, Nick Weiser. No pizza for you. That's right. You. No pizza for you. Uh, yeah. Bubba Doom, I love. Hello, computer. That's Hello, a good computer. one also. This is also one that she mentioned that she loves. I am enough of you. <laughs> I just, I've always loved that. I've always loved that line. Yeah, I love that line. There's so many you, good lines in that. I never that forget movie. a face. Of you, you know, a lot of great lines in that one. Yeah, like, that one's filled with good ones. Level, please. Try to spot a room. Thank you. Up your shaft. Up your shaft. Up your shaft is one of my <laughs> favorites. Don't call me tiny. That one. There was <laughs> some of the good ones. Fuck. That whole my scene. favorite has to be though. I have been and always shall be your friend. Your friend. Oh, that, that's, oh, a good that's a good one. That's a good but I'm talking in track three. Some of the greatest ones are, of course, oh, like yeah. uh, um, he says, "How many fingers are up?" That isn't very damn funny. Your sense of humor is returned. The hell it has. <laughs> What's that, Lexford? Lexford, you're suffering from a Vulcan mind meld, doctor. That green-blooded son of a bitch. It's his revenge for all those arguments he lost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Engineers, oh, they love to change love things. To change things. Oh yeah, that's right. We got that one too. That's a great yeah, line, also. Somewhere. Yeah, there we go. And they probably redesigned the whole sick bay too. I know engineers; they love to change things. <laughs> There's other great lines in that I love. In more serious note, lines that I like, uh, where you know, when he's talking, to, when his bones is pissed because he admits that he dra it was drafted him. They, he says they drafted in simpler language, Captain. Yeah. They drafted me. They didn't. You, this was your idea, wasn't it? Bones is a thing out there. Why is any object we all understand always called a thing? Always called Bones. a thing. That's Don't, such I a need you. I look, damn it, Bones, I need you. Badly. And he holds out the hand for him. I love that scene. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, and the way he holds out his, his hand, take me by the hand. Let's do this together. It's, it's a powerful, powerful scene. Oh, man. And then there's even simple ones that they used in Re Free Enterprise. In that for that, won't you please sit down? No, please. But anyway, they're all yes, close. yes, yes. Sit down. <laughs> definitely. Uh, I will definitely be returning, turning, returning back in again. Okay, well, that's great to see you. Thank you, uh, John Platt. Good night, John. Much, yep. Thank you for being here. Yes, Come sir. back before Tuesday. It won't be installed until Tuesday. On the other hand, not a good line. <laughs> That's another great line. Good line, like that engineer. That's a good yeah. choice, Mark. That's Let a great choice. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's a good line. <laughs> That's a great you line. You have position to demand nothing, sir. Yes. I, on the other hand, I'm in a position to grant nothing. Let's see. Uh, your reverend... Uh, your revered Admiral Nagura invoked a little known, seldom used reserve activation clause. <laughs> yeah. Simpler language, Captain. They drafted me. Uh, but I love the I love the exchange with Scotty and Kirk in the in the in the pod because because they gave her back to me, Scotty. 
Gay Father Baxter? I doubt it was that easy with Nagura. <laughs> Still, any man could manage such a feat. I wouldn't it dare disappoint. She'll launch on time, sir. She'll be ready. And then we got that wonderful. <laughs> yeah, then the score goes like, and the scene. drive by. I mean, yeah. Um, that scene is just one of my favorites. I can watch it. And sometimes when I'm not able to watch it, I have the soundtrack now right around listening to that that scene where the inter- you know, just looking at the Enterprise. Good God, it's great. And Fiona had mentioned earlier in the chat someone had uh, I believe that she was mentioning someone had 3D printed and selling uh the Buck Rogers Hawk ship and Retro Blasting showed that and yeah, Retro Blasting did a video about that. Yeah, I yeah, love the Hawk al- ship. And also the pod from that scene, someone selling that. You can buy that 3D. Oh, printed. the pod from the end. Oh, cool. Pod, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. This, this is one of my other favorite lines. Oh, we get in an elevator and do that. People oh, look at us like we're, we're like we're really weird. <laughs> <laughs> What's yes. wrong with you people? You know, and of course the, the classic. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't do that, Dave. Stop, Dave. Don't, Dave. I'm losing my mind, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. You're a healer. There's a patient. They always you cut off the best thing. You're a healer. There's a patient. That's an order. But anyway, good. Same. Yeah, and then this line is also <clears throat> classic. Jim, be careful. We will. Nice. <laughs> Hey, Sean Carter's, just so well written. <laughs> Sean Carter's working on his new Galactica. We're going to take a look at that. Put, put the link to your, um, if you're doing a link, because everyone, by I'll the way, get Sean, it, grab it. Yeah, I got Sean, it. Sean, yeah. we're going to put a link for your Jupiter 2 video. We were watching, Mark and I were watching that together last week. I mean, that was cool. Yep. And then also the Bastard Galactica is looking gorgeous. Nice. Too, so. Yes. And that was an old at, kit. It's like a 40 or 50 year old. It's a kit from the 70s. I think. Yeah, but it's I've in good hands. Right. Oh, Sean no, no. But I mean, it's it. it's a rare it's a rare kit. So yeah. It's really cool. yeah. Yeah, but it could not be in today. more capable hands. Uh, he is going to make it amazing. I mean, he's so talented. He's putting lighting in it. And he was showing how he was drilling through to add the lighting holes and all the effects. Yeah. So uh, just looks awesome. Yeah. Very well done. Yep. Yeah. But it's yeah, labor they, of love. Yep. But yes, you know, the, uh, you can do a whole show just talking about quotes. I mean, yeah. your favorite quotes yep. from your favorite either episodes of things or movies and stuff. I mean, yeah, no problem, Sean. Glad to do it, buddy. We love that man. That, yeah. The Jupiter Two. Oh, it's one of my all-time favorite ships. I just love it so yeah. much. When I was a kid, before I was able to really, when I was very, very young, other than the Batman TV show, Lost in Space was my life. That and Batman. Especially Lost in Space. It was the most favorite thing yep. ever. When I mean, I just loved it so much. And I felt like I was a part of the Robinson family. Man, you when you were a kid back then watching that show, you just felt like you were on that ship with them because of Will and you know Penny and things like that. Especially Will Robinson. Yeah. Even though my favorite huh. character wasn't Will. I liked Will, but because I was a kid, I looked up to John Robinson, but played by the oh, great the father Guy figure. Williams. Yeah, the father figure, man, John Robinson was a badass, man. He was so cool. He was so, you know, uh, yeah, God, I loved him. And he you know, wasn't the star of the show because it was Bill, Bill Mummy became the star of the show and Dr. Smith, but, you know. Well, yeah, that, they wanted the kids. They wanted the kids, yeah, the, and, and, and the robot, yeah. But they wanted True. the kids' audience. Yeah, and they, then they changed the show, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but it's still a great show, yeah. And the, and the model is uh is so cool, <laughs> yeah. So someday yeah, we will go to space. Uh, they think uh that's that type of design actually will will work. Of course, the aliens who visit here are always flying flying saucers anyway. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I love Empire, uh, Oliver. Do mm-hmm. or do not. There is no try. That's a great line. Look at me. Judge me by my size, do you? And where you should not. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, good night, Gwag. Oh, Greg. good night, Gwag. Everything. We're not far behind you. I'm Take sure it easy, get... sweetheart. Yeah, it's a school no night for me, so I got a jet. I can't yeah. even stay for the credits because it's already That's 1130 right. here. We're about to run out right now. So just if you think any final words? Number um, one? Yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone for your company tonight. I mean, this is Clobby's Clubhouse, so it's just a shoot the bull session. And, you know, every day or every every session we have, you guys deliver. Uh, I just had such a great time tonight. I'm absolutely bloody exhausted, um, and it's a school night. Otherwise, I would stay and say goodnight to all of you. 
thank you um, to all of my Patreon subscribers and um, I just, all of you for, for your great friendships and, and your marvelous conversation and for hanging out with us and, and for your gifts to Clobby. And I want to say thank you to Mark for being such a great buddy and Clobby. I love you. I'm sending smooches for your whole love face. Love you. Good night, Ezra. Good night, everyone. I, I love you all so much. Take thank care, you Raquel. so much for hanging out. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs> Good night. Love you. Good night. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to do some show noties and shout outies, of course. Uh, after not, but anything, would you have anything uh, to add, Mark? Nope. Anything to, to give us? Well, well obviously, we're doing uh, Sunday Night Geekery. Looking forward to that. And we'll be doing yeah. Late Night Fortnite. Do that after the, you know, very late after you, you're done with your comic book show with uh, Nick Weiser. So everyone go. Oh, wait, there is no comic book. Uh, yeah, no Nick Weiser. Night. Nick's not doing no, the Nick. show tomorrow night, I think. Okay. So, uh, like oh, crap, that means I have to play like eight hours of Fortnite then. Oh my! <laughs> gonna start thing. start early. Yeah. I did get a, a couple of new. I, got I wasn't new gonna be able point. to make it anyway because I only had some somebody coming in town. So. Okay. So, go ahead. Well, I've got a uh, I got another new toy in, uh, so I'm gonna maybe try to do an unboxing for that tomorrow. So uh, oh, okay. stay tuned. I'll try to try to do that. Yep. If I get all my regular work done. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was awesome hanging out with everyone tonight and. Uh, Thank you, and uh, yeah, the chat was chat was great. Great to see everyone, and a uh, lot a lot of fun tonight. So, good stuff. Yeah. Well, let's see. Where were we? Where were I? Are you gonna do the uh, shout outs or the? Oh, you have your show notes. Yep. Uh, yeah, show notes, shout outs, folks. Let's see. Tomorrow night, I'm proud to announce. For tomorrow night. And sorry about the Trek comic. We're gonna, we're gonna get a Trek comic review in there somehow. Although it, to do those two episodes takes up a lot. We'll, yeah, it's gonna be we'll tough. Figure yeah. it out. We'll figure it out. So anyway, um tomorrow night on J my great buddy J Man's channel, we begin Fantastic Fridays, and it's gonna be an epic. It's gonna be able, we're gonna do it. Uh, it's gonna take well, we're gonna do four. Basically, we're gonna uh, review all of Jack King Kirby's legendary run on the Fantastic Four. One of the, arguably one of the most, if not the most important runs in all of comics history. Uh, issues one through 102, and then all six of the annuals, all the Kirby stuff, and all that matters about the FF. Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It'll be, of course, myself, J Man, and Sean on J Man's, J Man's channel. We start tomorrow night with the first four issues of the Fantastic Four, and it is going to be fun if you're a comics fan. And we have a lot of fun doing these comics reviews. So please uh, join us if, you're, and if you are a fan of comics, of course. And again, usually there's the 32 Flavors of Nick Weiser. He won't be on this week, but he'll be on next week. And, and he's got a bunch of guests and cool stuff in the future planned. So, you know, and he's got some big time guests coming up. So he's looking forward to that. Um, to, uh, Saturday night, Star Trek is upon us. This week, again, four more scintillating episodes of Star Trek Voyager as we begin. Our reviews uh, starting with uh, begin season six reviews at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, same Trek time, same Clobby channel. And then, of course, coming soon in the not too distant future, next Sunday, 80, I will do a show as soon as I can figure out to squeeze it in, ranking every episode of Star Trek The Original Cities and uh, rating as well. So there's that. Uh, and then Monday night, I'll have a special. It's, it's B Monday of the month. The second Monday of the month to be Monday. That means it is back to Earth B with my buddy J-Man. He joins me, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, for another Wacky World of Bob Haney presentation. Another uh, a, a trip to uh, a, a Clobby's Classic Comic Review. We've got World's Finest, number 221, 1974. It is the Super Sons of Batman and Superman. So it is wackier even than it sounds. After that, it'll be a, the usual Monday Night Moxie comics talk. I think I'll probably review a Silver Surfer comic. Why not? He's all over the news and being treated like crap by Marvel, so by Disney Marvel. So there you go. Um, and now for some... Uh, but I thought you didn't read any comics. But I don't know anything about comics. Yeah, that's true. I don't know anything about comics. If you don't believe me, look at Twitter. I, so, yeah, um, everything on the internet is true. Everything is true. You can't put on anything about being true. Eric K, Chris Persia, D Bud Martin, Lord Thoth, J Man, Maddie Steady, Kal El, 
Fanti outside, Max Redstone, and of course, Larry, Larry, Larry. And let's see who's was hanging out with us tonight. I want to thank you all for that. Was our wrenches? Thank you all for hanging with us tonight. Sean Carter, Bubba Doom, one Oliver Bellamonte, Ezra Goldstein, Shalom, um, Shooter, Rob Altus, Canadian Spider Man, uh, Joe Dog, Edge of Time, the time scales. You guys know each other? Um, that sounds timey wimey. Yep, Don Don Ranger Powers. It is timey wimey. <laughs> Um, did I say Rob Altus? Sorry, well, I'll say it again because Rob Altus is worth it. Princess Fiona, John Platt, nice to meet you, my friend. Shooter, in case I didn't say him, okay, because let's see, I can't remember sometimes, I already forgot who I said. Damn it, uh, the great 32 flavors of Nick Weiser. Thank you, buddy. Um, Wagner Vulcan lives, or is it lives or lives? I don't know. I guess it lives, right? Or maybe it's lives because it's an I don't know. It's either way, right? Vul both ways. Vulcan lives. I've heard it both ways. Vulcan lives. lives. Vulcan lives. Yeah, lives works. You can correct us somehow if it's possible. Yeah. Um, but deep ba ba do boop beep bong 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 a bing bing bong. Michael Beacom and Cassandra. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get to the rest of them, folks. Takes a while to get to one. Uh, the time scales. I already said that. Sorry. Uh, but uh, hail time scales. Um, the re real way uh, nation gaming clips. Um, uh, um, Brogu from my old hometown. K. Roberts. Um, Professor R2, Brian Hepburn, I think Claude Saling popped in as well, Claude Saling, RRTNZ, Ravenscroft, by the way, uh, um, 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 um. Scroll, 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 scroll. So, Master of the TDS. Thank you, Master of TDS, for being here. Um, bum, 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 bum. Scroll, 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 scroll. Man, it was an active chat tonight. Dave C. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Man, this is something. The great 1701 text. Was here, of course. Um, ba bomb, bing, ba bang, bang, bing, bong, dead man and the dead man clan. Um, one day I'm gonna get smart and write these down like I do on Saturday, Saturday nights. <laughs> there are a lot S of people here tonight, which is awesome. Yeah, incredible. SP4H, by the way, anyone lurking out there, thank you so much for being out there. Keely Chow, roll tide. And keep that rolling across the whole side of the planet, buddy. Hope you're having a great time out there in New Zealand. Uh, Roll Tide, Keely Chow. And again, thank you all for lurking. Those watching on a rewatch or a download also, thank you very much. It is very much appreciated. And if you're watching over there on X, thank you. Thank you so much. Again, very much appreciated. A DJ play nice. Um, ba ba ba. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, my God. Um, so, just making sure we got everybody here, folks. Sorry about that. It takes me a second. But I don't like to miss anyone. You're all, you know, yeah. so nice. Tim's talk. Hey, you know, you're, you're so nice enough to come in and say hi and join us. Or an alter us. Hey, that I feel like I, I just I shout you out when you come in. David Glenn. There you go. And I like to shout you out on the way out if I can get if I can do it. It takes a minute, but hey, could not be reached for further comment. And a lot of people are already gone when I'm shouting them out. I realize that, but it doesn't matter. I just like to get it out there on record that I appreciate you. I'm taking the extra time. It's boring radio, granted, but uh, simply, Steve, I just feel like I feel like I'm obligated to doing it, and I appreciate you all. 
Me and my monkey, Michelle. All right, me and, me and my monkey. Um, uh, what the hell? All right, so I think a problem. Musk Wes Cagle was here. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Wes was here. Yep. Yeah, I think FKH. Our buddy Tim was here, and now and Penny was here. Lovely Penny. So now. Did I say Real Wade Nation? Yeah, I did. Uh, Real, Real Wade Nation. Now, there's two of them, I guess. Real Wade Nation Live. And there was a different one. It says Real Wade Nation Live, Real Wade Nation Live Clips. Hmm, maybe oh, it's it. his clip channel. I think he's got a clip channel for his uh, you gaming stuff. That's my guess. Ah, yeah, I you guess. could have two channels. Yep. Oh, Stupid Girl was here. We know who that is. <laughs> Zacharot popped in. Uh, the great Stone Loki popped in. Loki, buddy. Appreciate that. Hell, yeah, Loki. All right. So I'm going to go way, 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 way out on a limb, way out on a limb, and say that I probably got everybody now. Joe, did I get Joe? I'm sure I got Joe Dog. So yeah, I think I did. So. Did you say Dad Man? The dead man clan, yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. See, my memory is horrible not, too. So terrible memory. Swats, so mine's you know rubbing off on you. That's not good. Just contagious. Oh, I believe Susan Eckstein was here. There you go. Yeah, Susan Eckstein. So there was one I um, almost missed it. Sorry, Susan. Um, a baby, All right. So now I'm gonna go way, way out on that limb, like I said, and said so aside from, of course, Adrian James. I think I got. Every everyone, except for Scribe Light, which I'm, I'm not naturally. I didn't. I didn't get Scribe Light, but now I did. Scribe Light. The Balamese minion was there too. See, I told you. I told you. No, I didn't. Um, almost to the bottom. Almost there. Stay on target. Almost there. You're too close. Stay on target. <laughs> Stay on target. Stay on target. Yeah. Now, now I'm good to go. We're solid. We got everybody here. So. Uh, if you go to Zahadum, you will die. <laughs> Quoting Ambassador Kosh. That's it. Boom, done. Someone always pops in at the end, though. Yeah, S.C. Barnabas. Good. Hello, S.C. Hey. Barnabas. The other night, Jill chopped in on us, but I was already done. So, All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I hope you have a marvelous weekend. Uh, and... Yeah, well, not a marvelous one because they suck for what they did in the Silver Surfer. Have a, or you don't want a DC one either. Just have a great weekend. How about that? Good night, everybody. And uh, clobber on my clobberas. See no reason to stand here and be insulted. You're a dumbass. Well, a double dumbass on you! I, I just love clobbering time!